the future has in store. But for now, what the future has in store is the big kahunas. We'll see you same next, same bad time, same bad channel. Brendan's at the big desk. See you guys. Hey guys, yeah, welcome in Friday afternoon here as we get uh, into the final two hours of the day. I was just noting, uh, yeah, pretty negative across the board still. One and a half percent, 1.8 for the NASDAQ. I was going to double check if we are uh, still holding on to anything for the week at this point, but um, we'll do this first. Here comes a few things still moving around this afternoon. Uh, ugly couple of days back to back. Um, I mean, yesterday take it away after the overall market move. But uh, the week itself hasn't been great for Tesla, down another 2%, 171, uh, 172 coming back into play initially, 172, 171 down here. Um, trying to roll over right now, overall pretty high volume on Tesla today from a relative standpoint, top of the, or close to the top of the relative volume um, look that I have anyways. Uh, here is a very red S&P 500 to end the week. Let's talk about what isn't at this point because um, that's maybe more notable. Apple holding up very, very nicely after that big day yesterday, 3% to the upside. First time in a long time, uh, Apple had a 3% day on that AI headline, still holding on to a quarter of a percent, a little bit less than that right now, but uh, trying to get back to uh, break even. One of few, let's put it that way, Walmart relatively strong today as well. Everything else pretty much, including, yeah, the banks getting really hit here. JP Morgan, almost 6% downside coming off that ugly Forecast. I mean, it was mostly the forecast, less the report itself this morning. Uh, we'll get into more earnings from the banks coming up uh, Monday and Tuesday uh, with Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. Other way around, Goldman Sachs and then Morgan Stanley on uh, Tuesday. Yeah, more Fed speak during lunchtime. It was uh, Schmidt and then uh, Goolsby as well. Uh, mostly noise says Goolsby as far as the market movement at this point. So I don't know, we had a pretty ugly CPI print going back a couple of days ago. That certainly wasn't noise, I think, um, as far as the uh, inflation market is concerned, if you want to call it that. Uh, here's the overall uh, NASDAQ, just giving back yesterday. So let's put it in perspective. There we go. Uh, just giving back the entire move from yesterday. So we're just back to where we were in the pre-market, essentially. Uh, let's start things off with a look at semiconductors. We were touching on a uh, few things this morning. If you're with us in the pre-market, my keyboard's not working. There we go. Uh, we're talking China and semiconductors uh, or the possibility of China further restricting. I typed in semiconductors. Further restricting U.S.-based semiconductors going over to China. Obviously not good for uh, this group. I mean, I just said the uh, overall market, guys, giving back the entire day yesterday. Here's NVIDIA only about 50% of the way back. Something like that. Actually, I didn't, I didn't measure NVIDIA um, off of how much of the gain it gave because you're looking at everything else basically pulling the whole move. But really, yeah, you're kind of right. Like, if we're going to start with NVIDIA, why not? It is holding up really well. I know it's, de it's deceiving because the trend is so very clearly to the downside. And when you're, when you're sitting at lows like this, it would be easy to just be like completely gloom and doom, bearish and all that good stuff. But yeah, NVIDIA was at $865 when we started the show uh, yesterday in the morning. So still got $20. Maybe it's a flat bottom break. I think if you get into ifs and buts, you got some candy and nuts that you're going to be dealing with. Yeah, probably. I mean, usually that's how it that's goes. That's how it goes, yeah. But uh, yeah, NVIDIA is down 2.5%, but it's not, it's not the dog by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, AMD and Intel were the ones that bore the brunt of this. Uh, China, oh, can we skip banks? It doesn't matter. We're talking about semis. Um, you know, bore the brunt of this um, Chinese, China news and the tit for tat back and forth. The good news for AMD is they made the low at 950 something and have been attempting to bounce. Although, I, you know what, I kind of like VWAP in here. I think I'm going to like the VWAP retrace when we get back up there on AMD. But unfortunately for Intel, the truth remains. They are, they are the dog or the, the black sheep of the semiconductor group. The dog of the Dow. Well, not the dog, because, because I feel like you, the stock's got that dog in them. Like, yeah. NVIDIA's got that dog in it when it goes up. Yeah. It's wrong. Yeah. So I want to say it's the black sheep, because dog is, I like it for positive I term. Like Intel. Uh, so I'll go that way. Look, Intel, it's nasty. We were short pre-market at 37. There was, unless you sat in it right at the open, the only other play was off of VWAP. And that was like a mixed bag for me because I was short into VWAP. It did stop out. I got back in. Then there was the curl. I'm basically holding on to the last little bit right now with a 36 trail. And this is going to get 
I feel nasty er on Intel because you've now broken a one year long trend if we close underneath 36 and it feels like that's a very good possibility. Everybody, if you watch the show along a while, you probably remember the 25 bottom when this trend line all started when it made a higher low off of this. So your earnings are gonna be coming up for them and the, the question becomes, are they gonna be able to hold the line if uh, the last few reports haven't even been all that great? Uh, so nastiness on Intel. It was a short this morning. It's been a short. This stock's been a short since 50, and absolutely nothing has changed. Short the pops until it continues to drop. I am in Marvell, but I gave, that was a midday VWAP retracement trade, so more of a setup thing. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Adara, coming with a nice little refill. Ooh la la. Thank you. Mm. Okay. So, we didn't make it all back but we made back 25%. So yesterday, NVIDIA, you know, we had, didn't have a greatest relationship. We were going short yesterday during this. But then, uh, as we were coming back up, I was like, let's break 890 and let's go. So there's the break of 890, and we did this live on the show, by the way. So this was live on the midday show. We broke 890. We got half out at VWAP for 892. That's a $2 winner right there, so that's good. Then we got out the next half at the 200 period for $4. So that turned out to be uh, pretty decent. So that was it, and then we were done. But the story is not done, my friends, because we went over and we had a little interruption there of the midday show, and I apologize for this one. Because we just came online and just said, look, Intel early, we were short early. I was short into here, right? I mean, I, I'm down with this. Short into this high, we hit it, it was fine. Until it wasn't, we gave some back there. Then as this market was falling down, we'll talk about our TQQ trade. I'm not in the chat yet, by the way, my thing didn't roll over, I gotta load up that chat. We broke through 36. This was the number one trade idea today, was to go short Intel. We were short there, and then we didn't leave it alone. It came back to the 50 period, and we shorted it again and just got another piece out right there. So although this looks like we're planting purple flowers, as long as those purple flowers spin out one thing, money, 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 then we're happy with that, man. I'll plant these trees all day. So Intel right now is the number, for me, the number three, Apple one, NVIDIA two, TQ's three, Intel four. So again, another big day, pretty happy with this trade. It's Intel and we're net short, but we had, we have 16% left, if not less than that. So um, not much left on Intel. Great, great outs near that bottom. It's gonna be, again, trade idea number one from here. We'll talk about trade idea number two if we ever get to Chinese ADRs, but Apple AD, API on deck. He glanced past the uh, banks there, uh, probably a good idea to uh, revisit. A huge monster, if you zoom out a little bit here, huge monster volume day for JP Morgan to the downside, rightfully so. Uh, Got to go back to the uh, pat, or last uh, earnings day uh, to see the last one that was this high. So ugly, mm -hmm. almost 6% at the lows here for JPM. Yeah, net interest income, the issue here. Brendo, uh, as you pointed out this morning, despite the fact that they did very well on earnings, both on the top and bottom line, and they also have lesser loan loss provisions, meaning that they, the money that they've allocated for bad loans is actually, they're going to use less than expected, which means that moves to the profit side of the balance sheet. Despite that, the, the market really uh, making them pay here, almost down 6% at the lows. Um, if Quick recap, if anyone missed it this morning at 10 o'clock, we got that uh, Michigan Consumer Center number higher than expected on the inflation side of things uh, which seemed to kick off more heavier selling anyways for April so that's a one year 3.1 percent the five year they're still saying in five years Sharif we're going to be at three percent uh, versus a 2.8 percent expectation so that was kind of ugly I mean the actual index itself downside as well so uh, pretty ugly print there at 10 guys years we're going to be at three percent uh, hopefully a little sooner than that, but... Yeah, uh, I mean, that's extreme. I mean, sometimes you get, like, I don't know, you're trying to grab a headline, you're trying to shock the world, all that kind of good stuff. Now, we mentioned uh, in the... Look, the lesson of the day was about staying in your lane, right? So if you're a fundamental trader, you're probably going to be looking at that report and asking yourself, 
you know, is this going to be value in the banks and all that good stuff. But if you're just trading price action, then there's no question JP Morgan was not a buy the dip today. You could have had a couple of shots at it, and now you can say there's a double bottom, but hindsight's always going to be 2020 when you can look back at a pattern like this. So, uh, you know, I, I stayed away from it. I do think one of the things that can be interesting, at least in the couple of days, when we get uh, next week, we'll get Goldman Sachs, we'll get Morgan Stanley, is you start to proliferate through and it ends up midweek, we'll have two or three days of data and we'll have more earnings reports, you'll probably have some really good tradable levels, I'd like to think. The 50 period doesn't hold, but so far you got 183 in here, 85 looks like a resistance level. I want to see it put in some higher lows. I want to see some consolidation, all that good stuff. And when that does happen, what? I think JP Morgan's going to be a really good trade at some point next week. I just think you want to wait this one out. If you're, if you're looking to be a momentum trader and you Obviously, if you were short, it was fine today. But if you're looking for that bounce play, then you're just going to have to be very patient for it because obviously it wasn't really that good today if you tried it. But, I mean, if you're looking long term, some people probably were all over buying this dip, I would assume. Yeah, and like, um, like I sort of mentioned at the beginning of the show, I, I'll, I'll, I'll trade some earnings names, but it's going to have to be in the space that I'm pretty familiar with because, um, you know, I for a day trade, the banks, especially on – the day of, and, and Neil mentioned staying in your lane and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to repeat the same stuff, but it's just like we had been talking about this for a long time uh, here on the after uh, market show. We started to get into this down channel here. Recap show, my bad. Um, oh, crap. Hold on a second. Uh, so we, we, we started to see this sort of channel that was building up here. And what we noticed, obviously, as we talk about this, is that we started to fade out a little bit here on the RSI. So although we had the channel uh, for the stock, the RSI was actually starting to push some of these lows. And it's true of a lot of these banks. So as we kind of remained up here, leveling off in and around 190 or so, the RSI was really pointing down. Now today you're gonna get way oversold. I mean, obviously it's down five, 6%. Probably the last time it was down here was Whatever, maybe that was earnings right there as well. Uh, but the idea here, we had oversold condition. We had Daniel Shea on. We had a bunch of different traders to talk about this. We, we, we all thought, I think, that this was an oversold condition uh, or overbought condition, and today you're getting it pushed down in. So as per Neil's discussion, I think that this could be a little bit lower into here, maybe 175, something like that for a buy. I've always said don't buy something until the third day. So we'll wait for that to come through for the banks. But for me, a no trade zone on the show, but definitely something. I'm out of JP Morgan. Uh, we, we've, know, we've known that for a bit. So I'm a seller uh, right now if I was in, but I think it might be a little bit too late. We probably should have got something out before earnings. And that just goes to show you, as we head into earnings season, you have to decide what kind of a trader or mindset you're going to have because if you are swing trading or something like that, completely different to get into position before earnings, slightly before waiting for an earnings bump. But again, to the same point that Neil was making. So I, I love it. It's just, this is probably a good time to buy JP Morgan. If you've done the work, you think it's settling down, today you get a five, 6% push down. So if you're dollar cost averaging, some of these reports on what I believe to be best of breed are probably worth buying. Yesterday we had Morgan, I think he got to wait a little bit, but like yesterday you had that huge dump down in Morgan Stanley, down six, 7%, bringing you right into like a, a real nice level. And we talked about potentially buying some of this in around 85, 86, 87 dollars. And it just, you know, it's bouncing off there. If they have a good report, maybe you make some of that back. So again, just be careful with your investing decisions here um, and don't make them too like irrational. Let things settle down for a little bit before you throw these all out. Awesome. All right, let's talk Apple. Uh, trying to get back above 176 here, but uh, yeah, still one of the few here in positive territory after that monster day yesterday. Uh, nice move out of the gate this morning. That was the best opportunity today. It's been pretty sideways, but holding up here, I was just saying to Sharif off camera, it's like if the market upticks at all, this thing's going to be through the highs in a second. Oh, yeah. And uh, Dan Ives making us all aware of how he feels about this, mentioning the 2.2 billion active devices that they've got that they can monetize. But that wasn't the reason that we pumped up here, Brendo. It was because of the new M4 AI specific chip that was released yesterday. 
just uh, to recap here, we should be expecting three new MacBook models this year, uh, all with the M4. And then next year in 2025, we'll get different uh, variants of their product with that same chip, Brendo. Yeah, pretty good day. Uh, once again, considering the market here, obviously, guys, for Apple. So um, just real quick here. All right, so Apple was not on the radar. This is not going to be one of the sticky note trades of the day, it's, but it's going to be my P&L number one. So that's, that's part of the feeling you have to get. When we saw the market, I just want to show this because we bought this immediately off the open. Okay, and, there, and if I just zoom in, our best out is up here 177.50. So I thought we did pretty good. The best out we probably could add was 178.20. I was fine with that. We can explain that was the 50 period at the time or something anyways, why we would have got out. It must have been the 50 period. Um, all right, so anyways, as it goes up, we just see this base down here at 74 bucks. So I was sort of like, this was going to be an out anyways. It's an option level. It's a Friday. I mean, if it's going to break that, then they'll push the short. If not, they're going to push the long. And yesterday we had, I mean, that's why Apple's on the board, right? They had Apple AI. There was the chips going into the MacBook, which makes us think that they're going to put those same AI-based chips that they're making themselves into their own um, phones, into the watch, into whatever. So increasing margins, increasing safety, right? Because if, if all the processing is on your device and not in the cloud, that's probably better for speed, blah, blah, blah. So yesterday, I mean, I, I was doing a little bit of research on it, so that's why like, I, was, I was, was very puzzled by that move yesterday. But it's getting back to the 50 period. So when the market started to get going here right off the open, I was just like, okay, so see, all this green, this is the open. So all this green with a hold of this bottom of 18, whatever, I didn't even care about the features at that time, just saw some buying. So honestly, we just went right over into Apple. So again, I don't think it was necessarily rocket science. We just went over to Apple. We said what was strong yesterday, we bought it. And I just wish we would have made more money, but we did pretty good on it. It's P&L number one. And again, it doesn't always have to be sticky note related. I wasn't sure what kind of levels would come into play, but we knew we wanted the long. So we turned that into a, into a trade right off the open. So pretty good, happy with it, can't be upset as our last out is still two bucks higher than where we are now. So uh, good trade there on Apple, but that did surprise me, that move. So wish yeah. we had more shares. Yeah, it's one of those, and, and looking back on it with hindsight being 2020, it actually wicked the resistance on the daily chart here, unfortunately. Like it got up to 179, which is exactly the resistance level on the daily, and then wicked back under the 50 period moving average. And that's a pretty big rejection. So I do think that if it closes underneath, if it does close underneath this at 176, it's probably going to be a little bit of a pullback, like a pretty significant pullback potential going in next week. Because when you reverse a move like that, that's nasty. That said, if you look at support to resistance, 175 this afternoon looks pretty decent. So 175 is already higher lows. The market seemingly is making or attempting to make a bottom. I think you're looking long off this bad boy at 175 today. Um, I just want to say, look, we'll, we'll go to the desk because we're going to complete the rundown, but I, I do see this question in here. So we'll talk about Uber uh, coming up, but I think it's probably, do you want me to do this now, Brendan, or are we on time? Okay, okay, so let's do this now. All right, um, so here we go. Uber breaking the low of the day. Uh, if yes, do we stop at 73.50? Okay, so first of all, where we stop, no one knows. So let me just call up Uber right now um, and find out if we like that place. 73.50, okay, no. So I'll already say this. I had no idea where we were. I don't think, just looking at, we have two hours left. It's Friday. Um, could be quiet. I always say it could be quiet into the close. Again, um, you know, weather getting nicer. Fridays are always one of those days. I could see um, the market being not necessarily slow into the close, but even if you get down 2% in the NASDAQ would be a pretty major move there, uh, Turin. I don't think we get to 73.50 today. You're probably asking that obviously for options. I, I, don't, I don't know the value of those, but do I think Uber can go lower? Yes, because we're still underneath all of this. I would say it actually looks pretty strong because we bounced off of its low already. So when I think of this and I look at a stock like this, I say we came back into here, that's great, nice move back up, but then we stopped going down. So someone came in here and bought these levels up. The volume's not great down there, but I, I would say we may be tough breaking this bottom. 
right there. So I, I, don't, I don't love the short here, no. But it's nice that we're going to get rejected off VWAP here. I would say you could take the short now into the bottom of the day. And actually, now that you mentioned that, this might be a trade that I'm going to take. So thank you so much for uh, the super chat there. But looking at a larger time frame, yeah, I don't, you know, to get all the way back down here right now, it's a great look. You nailed it with 73.50. But to go down another percent and a half, I'm not sure that's going to be there for Uber today. But good luck. We're under the 200. We're under uh, the 50. So for that, Turin, I say you nailed it. That's a great short. Uber, possibly a good short against this high of 75.20. Good luck. Uh, no, I, I, I remember that. No. Um, let's go to uh, Chinese ADRs downside here, uh, right out of the gate this morning. Huge gap in the pre-market, and you get uh, you know a negative uh, catalyst, negative market, negative sentiment, and it's just a lot of red candles here on a 15-minute chart. For Alibaba is down four percent today. Um, if you zoom out a little bit, I mean it's three days. We're just back to the beginning of the week, essentially. Yeah, and if that wasn't enough, Brendo, Chinese government coming in with more regulations here, uh, telling their telecom carriers that they got to wean themselves off AMD and Intel's chips. Yeah. And that's uh, caused a lot of problems because they're, they're well um, into that economy. So we'll have to see how this works. Yeah, back and forth we go here, guys, for um, all things China. Only traded one Chinese ADR today. It was NEO, it was a flat bottom break. It was very similar to what we saw over there in Rivian Ouch. on the $10 break, 435 went down. It's once, twice, three, four times it tested it. Today it broke it right at the open. Your only shot for this is essentially just to put a stop order when it does that. And then it pretty much never found a bottom until 408. I'm trailing it now to VWAP. So it was really just exactly the same thing as we did yesterday in Rivian off the $10 level. And then just getting, you just got to get into those flat bottom breaks when they happen. Sometimes it'll be at 9.30, other times it'll be late in the day. Uh, it's not the only one. We did try Lucid as well. So sometimes they look like that, sometimes they look like this. Like I was reading the Lucid one, that flat bottom broke, it got to 42. Didn't really extend more than like six cents worth of a win on a three cent stop loss. I reloaded at 49 to just get out at 51. So that 250 level on Lucid, I'd say was a pretty big disappointment. You know, I would have expected this to flush to like 225 was going to be the target, as I was saying this morning. But Neo, I mean, if you like, if you're looking for risk, like risk reward trades as a breakout trader, and we all like when stocks go up, it's exactly the same principle as when you have a flat bottom break. Now, how many times we've seen Nvidia breaks 500 and goes crazy or something like that? So with these EV names, they've got these bottoms that are getting really, really nasty and very testy. Uh, probably not going to be much of a trade this afternoon because you can see it's fallen asleep at this point. Okay, yeah, good um, good look on that one with NIO. I, I know Neil likes to look at those, especially some of those EV names today. For myself, I'm, I'm going to have to slap to fail again, and I'm going to hit the sticky note box again as well because we're going to have one red name today, and it's going to be Alibaba. And honestly, I'm going to tell you about it because what happened to us is completely fine. And this is what's going to happen when you make calls and they don't work out. So where is it right here? Here's the sticky note. We liked Alibaba, 73 long. But at least we said to ourselves, and we talked about this in the pre-market, that once the market started to dump in the, in the pre, that it was we were looking at it and we were like, okay, well, maybe, just maybe, um, this was going to be a level for us uh, to look at was 72. Because we had looked at 72 a bunch of times. So 72 came in there, we took a small position at 72.15. Came back in, we averaged it at 72 flat. We got some out there at 72.09, but not enough. We take the L, it breaks lower. Then we said, hey, if it breaks back up, we want the long again, because maybe this was a failed break. Look at the volume on the 72 break. We had wrote this on our sticky note year for, for years for weeks and weeks that we liked this Alibaba long. If it was years and years, Alibaba used to be a $300 name. Can you guys believe that? Um, well, of course you could, I guess. Uh, but anyways, there it is. Nice move back up to the upside there. Took a little bit of an advantage until eventually we took one more shot and it broke lower. So for me, it is, and Neil mentioned that I do, don't do this enough, so let's do it. We will flush down Alibaba here on a red trade idea, okay? And the thing about it is, we actually, we wind up losing less on this than Apple, but to be honest with you, it wasn't that much less. 
About 20% less we lost on BABA than we made on Apple. So I'm not super proud of that. But again, on an idea that I believed in, I'm going to throw, we're still, we're still green on the day, a lot, like perfect. But that was an opportunity that we took and we lost it at 72. So there we go. You know, we, we, got, we, we got to sort of talk about the good with the bad. And for me, that was bad. So we lost on Alibaba, but not that much. Yesterday, I was mad at NVIDIA. We lost four times more yesterday on NVIDIA than we lost on Alibaba right here. So all is well on that one. But um, yeah, that's trading for you. And that was the Chinese ADR of Alibaba. I still like that Uber short, man. I was going to think about looking at that. So, uh, But we'll do that when we get back. What's up, Kevin Mendoza? Yeah, we'll talk about uh, Boeing here at day lows right now, trying to bounce off 170 once again. But it uh, wasn't much this morning, just JP Morgan. Uh, the latest to lower their price target. They maintained yeah, overweight on Boeing. So I guess they want to buy more or lower. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a tough look there with uh, JP Morgan. But here's what's going on from earlier in the week. You'll recall that Sam Salahapur, who was a whistleblower uh, and a former Boeing engineer, uh, basically said that there are issues with the Dreamliner. It's not just a 737. It's their flagship airplane here, and that precipitated a big sell-off. On the other side of the equation, though, they did win this $120, $112 million deal, Brendo, to upgrade the F-18s and the EAG. I don't know what this one is, but... Uh, apparently, it's going to make them some money. This uh, daily chart is uh, through that level now. So you got to go back to, I guess, this level. But uh, free fall mode almost here, guys, for Boeing. Yeah, it's so bad with Boeing that it's at the point now, like, I didn't even want to go short. I was so convinced that at some point, it's like they're just going to stop having bad news and you're going to look for that one day. Just that one day where it's going to be a green candle and you, you get that upshoot. And that was like the wrong analysis. It was a very simple, we broke the lows, 52-week low yesterday. And once it was underneath that, all you had to do was short it. It's that simple. The low was 171.40. It gets there, consolidates, and then right at noon, it just falls like a rock. That's like a, that's almost like a free dollar going with the trend on the stock. And it's like... Slap the fail on it because we've been saying if you have a bias on a stock, it's a short till it's not, it's a long till it's not, all that kind of good stuff. But how many days in a row does it have to be read before you just say every single day I'm going to look for a short in this stock until I lose on it? And we say this about the EVs, and it's easier to do with the EVs because they're just bad fundamentally in a, in a lot of levels, but most people are probably going to go and tell you that Boeing – there's value here. I completely believe there's value here. I actually think I'd be a buyer of this stock if there's no bad news for the next two weeks into earnings, which I do believe are on the 14th. If they don't have a single piece of bad news till then, and then they have a good report, and this stock is still under $180, I'd be a buyer. But that's a lot of ifs, and until then, you should probably just be short this thing until the cows come home. Uh, okay, so... JP, oh, Boeing. JP Morgan cuts. That's what screwed me up this morning. Boeing. No, I did the same thing this morning. Yeah, this morning I saw that and I was like, okay, JPM? Um, but okay, so Boeing, yeah. I mean, I know Neil and I have talked about some of these things as investments and so on and so forth. I don't know if that's going to be the case. I, I, I would honestly say GE has an aerospace division. Like, if, if you, and our charts aren't going to show properly here because GE did not have this tank. I mean, a lot of you that are shareholders uh, would know that you got that uh, Vernova there. So, but anyways, I think as an industrial, there's so much else to look at right now other than Boeing. Although I know Boeing is a, is a completely own, own beast, sort of, um, and you may find value eventually in BA. But I mean, these industrials, I'd almost look here, Caterpillar, Deer, um, just the XLI, it is pushing back into the 50 period moving average. Some of these ETFs that we really like, if you like the story moving forward, I feel like ETF might be the way to play. I don't know of like an ETF that Boeing would be in, uh, like as far as like, I don't think there's like an airplane ETF or anything like that because there's Airbus, there's Boeing, and then there's gonna be Spirit and things like that. But um, for me, I like Boeing down here. It's just, we said this, until the story starts to change, I mean, you're bouncing your head off here and wondering where the bottom's gonna be. If everybody's looking at the same charts, 
then I mean this 170, I mean like you're already broke through 180, which was sort of, uh, as we've said before, I know Neil uses it more, but the Alamo there, you've already broken below it. So like you're on the other end now. I'd be very careful about Boeing and I don't even think it's worth averaging in. If you're in the name, I'd say it's a very solid hold. I would not sell at these bottoms, but the bad news keeps getting worse. So Boeing definitely not working out here and um, yeah, that's Boeing. So I don't have much else to say. We, we got credit yesterday because we had mentioned getting out of it. Someone, I, I don't know if it was Elon, I'm not sure who it was on the chat and I apologize for whoever it was, but uh, we had talked about it up here when they sort of had their miscues. And once we broke below this 200 period moving average, at that point, the trade kind of got sketchy. Um, and uh, yeah, it's only been getting worse from there. So Boeing, unfortunately, this is just such a stupid pun, but should probably be grounded uh, right now. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, we both think, I don't think we can buy it at this level, so. No, uh, you need But for, for average, maybe, Something but, has to change. I'd rather yeah. something change first and then be late to the move. Like, yeah. if you miss 10% on an up move in Boeing, I'm already on. I was like, getting, AMD, if it's, it somehow magically gets to VWAP, I think it's going to be a short. But uh, when I say magically, it's because it continues to go down. No, I just think that if you miss the first 10% of a Boeing move and it is a good move, then it's probably not going to be a big deal at the end of the day because this could be 250 260 bucks if you just look at sort of like the valuation, what Airbus has been able to do, like Airbus has been absolutely fine and they've been the ones winning off of this. So, you know, I just, I'd rather miss out on this one than try to, picking a bottom's really hard. I saw that in the chat. It's like, how hard is it to pick a bottom? There was a question just now about Mara and is Mara a good buy? And to answer that question, like, like look at this thing. Uh, here, you, well, the question is, is Mara a good buy here? It's at the 200 period moving average, but I like strong stocks at the 200 period moving average, not necessarily ones like this. You've got the halving coming up. I think you wait till after that. That'll be in a few weeks. I think now it's like the 21st. It's supposed to be the 18th. Now I think it works out to the 21st. But uh, support's been at 1415. Let it start to make a move to the upside because when Mara consolidates and then breaks out, look what happens. Consolidation, then break. Who cares if you miss the first few shekels? Consolidates, then breaks. If you miss the first $3 of a Mara move breaking out, well, it went another 12 the when last time. The halving? Well, it's like a moving, the, the halving's it's like a, 18th, it's like a moving target. It was the 18th oh, and okay. I saw it could uh, be like the 21st now. So oh, okay. it's mid, it's sometime mid month. It's not good for the miners. It's good for yeah, Bitcoin okay. and scarcity, but it's not great for the miners. And that's why Mars down another 9% today. And I mean, if Gemini there's a- Gemini says the 20th. The 20th? Okay, so the but 20th are gonna be right about But that. like, look at this thing. I don't know, would you wanna buy this stock when it looks like this almost every single day? When Bitcoin's above 70,000, or well, it was above 70,000. Yeah. Now we're at 67, 66, um, 66 and a half. What's 66. That? What the what hell the, is going what on just with happened Bitcoin? to crypto? Is that, Bitcoin is really starting to go lower here. Uh, um, what ugh. just happened? You would think that as there's uncertainty. What, the, what are the odds that that just now fell apart? Is it? Let's look at, well, you're looking at iBit, right? Yes. Okay. Um, first of all, right now, Intel. Here we go, man. Intel is going to be close to PL number one. It could take over Apple right there, which is great because it is sticky note idea number one. Just like the last couple of days, man, the sticky note ideas that we've had have been pretty hot fire. Uh, but again, you go, you got to trade what you see. Um, and what we saw earlier, guys, was a market that was about to get absolutely crushed. But unfortunately, we went short there, we went short there. Unfortunately, come on, whenever there's some money, it's not that unfortunate. But at the same time, um, I thought when we went all the way back up here and then I went for my damn walk and sometimes when you get, go for those walks and you get, you regroup, you do miss opportunities. And man, that would have been a hell of an opportunity to short that market one more time. You know I would have done that at the 200 period. You guys know I'm firing bullets at this short all day. So that, like, if, come on, I'm not short, like, anyways, that's a reload there. It came back in and I honestly felt like maybe we were holding 18.2. And then Sharif, turned over to me and he goes we're at 18.2 again and I had just gotten out it was right here and, and he had said are we breaking 18.2 and I was actually like I think yeah 
So I should have gotten back into the short and probably shorted again right there. So let's have a look. If we come back into the 200 period right now for the Qs, this is just a one minute chart. We'll probably look to go short again here today. But Apple, great, great P&L name, my number one, that's a long. Amazon is there, we're up on it, not huge. That was a long. Um, Alibaba, my number one and only loser, that was a fail uh, on the long. Intel, let's go, that's the short. Microsoft, boom for the long, that was nice too. Nvidia, we hit long. You know, TQQs, short. So again, I just feel like me and Neil have honestly- This is still, this is getting nasty. Well, what I was gonna say is, I is bits that- tank. What is, what, what is spot Bitcoin at right now? And is holy it moving shit, this Can much? you see it's right there, 65.8. No, but this is moving faster than that. Why is IBIT falling so US far? US Senior Administration, um, BTC, Bitcoin. So I, I'm not seeing anything. I'm just seeing it's dropping. Uh, Bitcoin's, Bitcoin to go on another huge run was the story from uh, Benzinga. So that ain't it. And the most recent story I'm getting here is uh, Senior Administration Official of China is, China is supporting Russia's war effort. That's not good. Uh, and you could, by helping it ramp up its defense production, not good. Um, okay, so, all right, that's FXI in China names, but uh, you're right, Neil. I mean, now you're bouncing to 65. If it holds 65, this is probably What, what are, long. did you find a level on iBit there that you like? 65,000 is like 73, 37 half looks okay. Off that bottom? If there's nothing specific here, it just did a huge, but it's like, it's still heavy. I don't know. Well, here it comes back. 37, 40 maybe. Wayne, what's going on with crypto? What is going uh, on? All right, um, right now we are starting to go a little ham. We are long now at 37, uh, 37.49. I'm gonna try this below 36. Uh, stop order under 37, what's up, A? Not seeing anything on Bitcoin right now. I'm gonna keep my eye out uh, for it. There's lots of discussion on Twitter with regards to Bitcoin, but that's pretty much usually always the case, so not seeing anything specific. However, Tesla though on watch here, uh, US Treasury saying that Tesla and other automakers have received a combined 580 million so far from the IRS this year for reimbursements for the EV point of sale tax credit payment. So interesting note there with TSLA, still looking for the Bitcoin story, guys. Yep. Long eye bit down here, so we are now nicely in the money. We are now at another 25 cents in the money. Remember we said, man, get those damn tools out and sharpen them up, baby. Uh, yesterday we nailed that news story um, with Morgan Stanley. How good was that, right? Let's just get a piece out here if we can get this out. In the 80s, we just saw a nice move up. Now it's coming back in. Have the ability, we, we brought this to you. We were just talking crypto, and then Neil was like, wait a second, what the hell's going on with iBit here? Um, and yeah, what was going on with it? Nice move to the downside, come on. We're at, eight, I don't know why we're at 83, I hit off or enter, but we are at 83. There's sellers yes, at this 80 exactly. level. So, all right, well we're in it, let's see what happens. Quick little trade here. Um, we'll try to hold the rest of it. Our stop was gonna be 37 flat, but I also wanted to average in. So if we can get another dip, let's try to take it, but be very, very careful here. You never know, like I said, man, where that bread's gonna be buttered, but if you're watching Trader TV Live, then you know you've got the best station. So here we go. Let's see what happens here to the upside right now. I'm still excited by my guy, Josh. Where is that guy? The mark. The marketing maven, that guy. I want to talk to that guy after this. Uh, he's out for a walk, like we all should go out a little bit. Here we go, IBIT. We did not get out at that top. Well, we tried, but it's now uh, really dancing, and we do have a Dara. So once she, not now, but once she's ready uh, and sees something, we'll bring it. But right now, it is a nice downside move. SMCI, people talking about uh, really getting dumped yeah, out. Probably everything is falling on. I mean, that would make a lot of sense uh, there. Yeah, the so. SDR probably got destroyed. Um, I mean, the market is down 2%. This is, this is a different story. When it went down here on Wednesday, no, it didn't. I said, take a damn breath, everybody. But that's because. We just went down like instantly on that CPI number and then ran into past support. So we're trying to get into those levels again, but this feels a little differently to me because we've just been stair stepping down. And to me, the scary part about all of this is it has nothing to do with the economy. So we got, we got JPM come out today and really not, you know, not give a great report and disappoint, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Right, then you have now apparently some worries, uh, which has always been here, but now 
looks like a little more serious about Iran, which, which, which is not going to be nice. Um, so yeah, and then you get Nvidia losing 900, you know, tried to get up there. 880 now, Neil? Yeah, I mean, it's some of still, these markets are starting to fall down pretty good here. Yeah, if, if, it, if this was just a liquidity grab on Bitcoin, it would have already got back yeah. a little bit more than this. Usually when you get a wick bottom, uh, come to iBit for a second, usually when you get a wick bottom like that, I'm expecting you, to, you would have punched through that 80 level, the seller that was there, and we just sort of float up to 838s. I mean, this all accelerated at 3850. And it was, it was a complete coincidence. I mean, we, were just, we just happened to be talking about Mara. Like, I wasn't even trading it or anything like that. And the next thing I know, I'm like, I was looking over, because I when I'm looking at Mara, and I'm like, oh, yeah, Bitcoin's a blah, blah, blah. And then I see the thing on Sean's, and I'm like, and I'm like, lower and lower and lower. And it just started happening. But the seller's still here at 80. I might take another leg out there at the 81 level as uh, probably going to drag some things down here, because... Look, you talk about the wealth effect. Well, one of the things that's held up pretty well is BTC. So when you get that coming down, it's going to drag a few things with it. Adara? We still don't see any news for this, but I do want to point out, I have noticed here and definitely being discussed online as well, that this is not just Bitcoin. This is a lot of these cryptocurrency-related names. Ethereum down almost 10% here. Solana down about 13%. Ripple, 13 Dogecoin, 12 Cardano, 20 Avalanche, 19 So it looks like this could be overall geopolitical reaction. Uh, but this is a pretty move, big move down here. Also worth noting as well, an update to that story Sean was mentioning um, with regards to China supporting Russia's war effort. Uh, apparently, this specifically was discussed when um, Biden and Xi met. So uh, previously discussed and said that that was not a good idea. So the fact that China is doing this could be interesting as well geopolitically, guys. Oh, wow. Okay, we're still him, though, because look at this. Intel, still that downside move. Um, there's two ways to look at everything. I always think that if there's something wrong in this world, um, people might flight to gold. We talked about that. A flight to silver. Um, a flight to something that's more stable as far as we talked about the utilities. Um, and maybe not multinational tech firms. Um, all right. So we just took some profit there. Spin it one more time. Crypto, it's Apple, it's Amazon, it's, uh, it's Intel, it's Softy, it's v NVIDIA, it's the market. So far today, you know, here we go. I'll get, I know Sebastian was just joking earlier this morning, and it's okay? Take that? Oh, Lovely. that's the flatten? Uh, okay, yeah, sorry to hear about wow. that. Wow, no, 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 that's like the state, the, it's like a save. Oh, this, oh, this oh, okay. should be... Okay, I don't know if you want to talk, I can still talk. No, I want to know if there's news on this thing, but I haven't found it just yet. Uh, a deal might have fallen through on this oh, TCN no. stock, uh, which has just dropped 15% to the downside. If there is nothing going on, I'm considering a punch long. But I was in the long already. This is insane. Okay, I so pick something up in front of the 10 level. So basically, a stock that's supposed to be closing a deal at 11.25 just tanked $2, which you do not see very often. And I don't wonder if it wasn't just the floodgates opening up. Okay, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I'll let you deal with that because I know that's more serious than this. Um, okay, so here, so. Uh, just real quick, um, IBIT is continuously going higher here. Now, again, we've, we, we've sort of talked about some of the things that are happening uh, in this world and some of them aren't that nice. So uh, I, I would think, to me, that would mean Bitcoin strength, to be honest with you. But uh, we did have a move down, and I don't know what it was about. We looked at it, and it's just funny that we talked about the halving and everything like that, um, and then this kind of happens. I could see Bitcoin here. Let me, let me call up Bitcoin. I'm talking about it and just looking at IBIT here. Um, all right, so here's that move down. I'm going to call up a one-minute chart once this loads. I apologize for a second here. Um, all right, so obviously, I guess Binance, who I'm using here, is pretty busy right now, needless to say. Uh, but that was a monster flush down to 65. Like, that's what happens when you break. So I don't, again, like, without going over everything, because I don't know everything, um, that was a nice move down. All we can do is look at some charts. So let me go over to four-hour chart, because look, oh, my God, mamma mia. Uh, it just falls right into, again, support. Like, we talk about all the time having lower bids on stocks, just in case an earnings report, you know, comes out, and it's not as bad as you think, but yet gets flushed in the morning, or an event like this happens in the middle of a day where, like, you know, you're waiting to buy some J&J, &J or I'm just using a 
a healthcare name. You know, tanks because of a report and then, you know, false and break back up or Apple is a good example of that sometimes too. But anyways, here on Bitcoin, if you had that look right there, like that could be something as well. Uh, down there for BTC, down to 65, 65 one, a nice little dip buy opportunity there for everybody that's a Bitcoin enthusiast, if you do like uh, those dip buy opportunities. But um, all right, so that, there's what that is. You guys let us know in the chat, uh, tweet it at me or whatever, if you have any news or just put in the chat and Bears vs. Bulls uh, will handle that as well for us. Uh, and thank you for that, Bears. But there it is, man. It's a nice move up. Uh, Neil's still in the long. I'm still in the long here. We, we it did. It fills the same seller, by the way. Uh, it gets to like, I bit, I don't know what Bitcoin is that, but I bit gets to 3780 to 3790, and someone is just sell, 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 sell when it gets to that price. So that's like 66,000. Eight or 66 half or something like that. If you're watching spot Bitcoin prices, it's getting it's like it's nasty. Like the fact that you have a lot of dumping down there, maybe it's a sell into. But you don't want to hold. It's, it, but it's a 24 hour thing. That's oh, by the way, I checked my Coinbase to see. Is it down? Nine times out of ten, when there's a spike like that, I actually can't log in in that moment. But I pull out my phone. I logged in. No, I didn't. On. I didn't make a trade. But I did sort of like, I, w I simulated like I was going to and everything was absolutely fine. So uh, Coinbase looking okay. I mean, obviously it's going to drop in a situation like that. Uh, Dara, yeah, this is wild. What's going on here? I don't have anything on Coinbase yet, but um, keep an eye. Nova Nordisk here getting a pretty... Pretty significant volume candle here compared to previous volume candles on the three minute. Seeing here from the Wall Street Journal that some pharmaceutical drugs, including Ozempic, having um, new high levels of shortage. So loss of shortages potentially uh, impacting Ozempic here as well. NVO down about 0.7%, guys. 40? Yeah. No, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's why you got to punch out. Um, um, I mean, you can even discuss that if you want. I don't know. It's up to you. Um, all right. So I just want to discuss one more thing here because Intel, um, I just took another piece. So 3570 right there. I mean, that's, that's something, obviously. So, I mean, there's Intel. Nice little bottom move there. Came back in. Um, it's trying to hold a little bit. This is going to be slowly... It's now PL2. I don't know if it's going to take over Apple, but um, that's, that's good. We've now settled that out. Intel right there with your trade of the day, and it's, it's, it's my number one stock. So, and and this, one's pretty, this one's pretty simple, too, because um, we didn't have too much in the way for this trade. And what I mean by that is, is like, there wasn't much, like, it was pretty simple. Uh, like, you know, it, it's trades that we can all hopefully make if we have similar executions you know 36 short is pretty simple okay ramin we're gonna go over to adara so feds bostick speaking right now saying that um he does not see more than one rate cut this year and in no hurry to quote uh feds bostick to cut rates right now so one rate one rate cut currently his outlook and saying that in no hurry to, to um to change the rates guys so there's a question chat. Bavin uh, Patel is saying, are there any defense stocks ETFs? Um, ITA is a, is a defense ETF. Individual names, Northrop, uh, Northrop is a good one. Uh, Lockheed Martin's a good one. But I mean, it's not as if that's going ham to the upside. This is like an everything, an everything drop. Like that's pulled back. Oh. Lock, I, see, I just saw it. There's like this whole thing where Sean's screen flickers off and on, and I never, it's like the poker room. Yeah, but see, now you saw a different screen. Uh, I saw it, I just saw it, it happen It's been too. multiple screens. You know what, I mean, we've been doing this show, so the thing is, maybe you guys can tell us, because I don't know if Rob's still here or not. You know, at some point, HDMI cables and like whatever's connected, they degrade. I think that's exactly So, I mean, we literally have these screens on eight to 10 hours a day, but I mean, most people do, I guess, in offices, so it's not I, like. Yeah, but. But I just wonder if the graphic quality, I mean, it's not. The usage that these get, I mean, the PCs, we, like everything sort of, like it's, it's on half the day, but sometimes it's on even more than that when you think about it, yeah. let's put it to sleep. But uh, look, even when I, we say this is an everything down move, where are you? Why do I have to scroll? Okay, never mind. Next time I'm just gonna put it in myself, the AM, but I have to scroll down to get GLD. Look at gold right now. Flight to safety, huh? How huh? safe do you feel? No, good. Look, gold's been on an absolute tear. Low of day. Oh, no. Show me something that is not like a reverse ETF that's not at the lows and is actually strong, and I'll be all over it this afternoon. But it's 250. Uh, I bit 
The guy bit's okay. Obviously, we're not going to get the short in AMD anytime soon. Let's be real about that. But I bit, it's okay. It's now holding this line in here at 37.6. So I've marked it off. This is, okay, I happen to be long at this, just at this price. But it dipped back in, and there was a higher low buyer at 37.60. So I'm just going to give it to that. If we get underneath 60, I'm out. Otherwise, let's hold and see where this bad boy can go. Let's just try to respect it. Because this is one of those moves. It's not like the flash. It's not the flash crash, because the flash crash was more extreme. But there was no particular, no particular catalyst in the moment. And everything just happened to be gliding down at the same time. And what you could have had was a bunch of liquidations on all kinds of things. Uh, stops going down as well. Uh, let's go to the, I mean, the VIX probably moving. I haven't checked that out. Sebastian, good look there. Uh, too many things to be watching at the same time. I'm going to hold eye a bit. Maybe we can get back through 38 to VWAP. But uh, let's go to the table or the desk and handle some business. This part of the show brought to you by IG. Got opinions on central bankers, geopolitics, and economic data? Apply your macro views with the Forex account at IG. Currencies like Euro and USD can require as little as 2% margin rates and offer $0 commissions trading using your Forex account at IG. For a limited time, traders can open, fund, and trade with IG for up to $10,000 in funding bonuses. Terms and conditions apply. AMD, what are you doing? Nope, AMD is not on the Amex. See, that's what happens. The last thing I'm looking at is on Amex, and then I type AMD low of day here. Mm, okay, I'm going to back off because I feel like if we do make the rally in, the la in power hour and get to VWAP, it's almost power hour. you're going to want to make a judgment call as to whether you want to be shorting something after that kind of a move down. Like, is that when you want to take it? I don't know. So let's back off that i put a trail i haven't added to intel i know you were able to in here i haven't added it didn't even get vwap so i'm just trailing it and i keep moving it down if it gets above 3580 i'm out of that bad boy uh what else we got i feel like ibit's gonna be the thing back into vwap oh yeah i should be getting out of marvell marvell did not make fresh lows there so that's a warning sign marvell i have marvell off vwap here it's a vwap retracement trade but if a stock didn't dip on all this nonsense that's been happening, the NASDAQ is holding the lows, then I think you want to take your profit if it tries to get back to the upside. Like, there's no plunge there. We just saw NVIDIA drop $8 and broke, and broke its support lows. So if, if Marvell's not going to get any lower, then I think instead of giving it to, I think, 71, oh, I didn't cancel my other stop, instead of giving it back in here to 71, 71, 20, we give it to 70, like 80 and change. And we'll trail it to there. If it breaks down, maybe we have a chance at that 70 level. Otherwise, you know, let's just play it by ear. Because I'm not gambling on a relief rally, but if one does happen, I do not want to get caught off sides. I already have a trail on NIO. But uh, let's see what happens. I mean, IBIT is now really starting to stabilize. And if, for anybody that trades GBT or Bitcoin in general, I think you understand when these types of liquidity moves happen, my first response is I'm going to look for I'm going to look for signs of a bottom. Like let it make a big volume wick bottom, and the second it makes a higher low, generally speaking, liquidity goes out on those moves down, and as it eases back in, you're able to get some kind of reversion trade. I'm not I'm never punching into that liquidity on the short. And uh, ever since these ETFs have come around, now you can trade them like stocks. Now, obviously, this is what a lot of people would have been doing on weekends. Uh, when they're trading spot prices, and it's fantastic. Now we can do it for real here uh, with iBit. And yeah. I mean, there's others, but we're always going to be involved in iBit because the volume's the best. Yeah, I mean, I haven't even, I don't even, try, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think the volume is the best, but I haven't actually uh, looked well, at the Well, I checked the one could be like that ARK K, ARK B. No, the good thing about it. ARK is oh, that ARK, two million. ARK trades at the price, which is like a fraction. So yeah, basically, so it's nothing. This is 45 million. It's not even close. But, but ARC, you can just look at spot Bitcoin yeah, so prices. You know, 66.5. Yeah. yeah. You see, so here we go. Come over to the screen here. So that's a good point. Um, this, this is why ARC B might be a little bit better for those of you that are actually tracking the price of Bitcoin. So like 66.4, 66.5. So 66.5, you know, it's all here. So it's 1% of the price. Uh, whatever that math is, uh, all the way down here. So that, that'll try to track it pretty much exactly uh, as you go. So that actually might be, I mean, I could actually be interested in that. 
we don't pay here, we don't pay, like some ETFs will have different management fees and stuff like that. Obviously, if you're an investor and you're looking at price decay or you, you want to pay less um, of a fee, you know, different ETFs will have different prices to those. But here as a day trader, and obviously for you guys as well at home that are day trading this name, you're not going to care about whatever the management fee is. You're just trading the name. So, um, yeah, Arc B is pretty interesting there. We are still in IBIT as we uh, noted a couple times. Uh, even Neil mentioned there that there was some sellers up here. It looks like it doesn't want to break. So, yeah, it looks like that is going to be the case uh, on IBIT and possibly waiting to see if we can break it and go back up to the upside. I'll sit in and around here like 38.50 maybe. That's probably a little high. We are entering power hour. Um, so let's potentially start to look for some more trades. Intel's not doing anything right here. We've done really well on NVIDIA into closes, um, but wow, okay, down 3% and NVIDIA right now bouncing off of, okay, 875. You know, that could be a level for sure, 875. We didn't get down that low today, no. Uh, but where were we yesterday? So yesterday we had, we, we talked about dancing with the short all the way up, and that was not fun at all. But 875 in here yesterday. A little bit of consolidation, that wick at that very bottom, 873. So okay, so if you have an 875 short, watch out, or long, or any position there, this little wick candle that happened yesterday at 1020, that was 873. So that's going to be a level to look at here. So I feel like we want to do that here on NVIDIA. Possibly go long, but we'll, we'll have more of a look at it. I don't mind this long. I prefer a short today in a market that's down 1.7%. But maybe that 875 is something there on NVIDIA all the, way, all, all the way at that bottom. So 873 is a little better. But right now, considering an 875 long on NVIDIA. Coinbase uh, still moving around. Yeah, I'm looking at it like this doesn't feel like it's over, man. The move down? No. No, just in a general sense. Like we're like this bounce Maybe here. The market. Like this bounce just keeps stalling and stalling and stalling. What's this uh, Oscar uh, Oscar play? I just don't know if any of that like China might China could approve Bitcoin ETF as soon as Monday. Well, I we have a dare there. If something happens. Yeah, look. It'll tell us. No, and I'm not like I'm not discounting. It's just something I read in the chat for anybody. If you're not paying attention right. to the chat, it's a, it's a subs only chat. So just to make sure it's not spam, we want to make sure we have our subs. So it's a reasonable amount of messages in there. So one of our one of our viewers said China could approve Bitcoin ETF as soon as Monday and added us. I don't know if that's true. I have not heard that on Benzing. I have not seen that in any source that we have. So I don't want to say it is or isn't a thing. That said, is it that bad though? I mean, it's not. We're not even really down. It's not that bad. I mean, bad. we're down 5%. It's not that bad. Not in, not in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Like, when you zoom these bad boys out, I'm probably still on the 15 minute because we were talking momentum trading. But if I go back out to a chart that I usually use, like, an hourly, like, if you put up an hourly chart of Bitcoin, there you go. That's much better. There you go. Like, if you put up an hourly chart of Bitcoin, okay, since the start of March, support was a 60,000 level. I suspect there's going to be some buyers at 60 on this. And it, it looks bad, but is it really all that bad? I'm going to go out on a limb and say, you know, this is pretty standard. We have seen moves like this before. I think the difference here is it happened on a Friday after crazy action in, the, in, in equities, and it didn't happen over a weekend. It happened live while we're here watching it. I think that's what's a little bit different about it. And so psychologically, it feels like it's a bit more... Uh, than what it is. Uh, let's go back up to the desk. Adara has something for us. So, yeah, I did find this story with regards to China and the Bitcoin and Ether ETFs. Bloomberg reporting that Hong Kong may approve. This is just the, the spot uh, BTC chart or BTC USD. Um, so Hong Kong might approve spot Bitcoin and Ether ETFs as soon as today, but uh, the trading would not be happening until the end of the month. And this is not confirmed. The sources even saying that the approval timeline isn't fixed and could be changed at the last minute. So very, very tentative story here coming into Bloomberg with regards to those China's ETFs, guys. There you go. You know, the thing about the thing about Trade TV Live, we strive to get it to get it right, and it's um, we're never doubting anything that gets put to us uh, while we're on the live show. I'm not here to be that guy or anything like that. But I would always I would hate for people to execute on something if we're not really sure about it. Like we saw that. I mean, we talked about this with the Tesla. Are they not going to do? Are they not going to do the new smaller model or not? And there was that story that came out, and then Elon sort of uh, tweeting out that. 
you know, Reuters had it wrong, and all of a sudden, he deletes that tweet. It, it just, it was a whole mess, and you want to make sure you get it right if you're going to be executing. Look, I just took some out 38s as we just popped back into, like, 66 half. So I took some out on iBit here. As that news came, it got to the same high, so it's another high or low. I figure we'll let it ride, either it breaks... 37.6, as I said before, or we're going to get like 38.5, like where this thing all started. And obviously, if you're trading spot prices, it's going to be a little bit different. What we were getting at, I don't know if we actually showed this on, for the ARC, or there is it, for the ARC B, and why this, some people might prefer to trade this, but the volume's not as good, is that when you look at this, Okay, it's 66.5, and this trades at $66 and like 44 cents, which I think is easier for people to wrap their heads around. Um, so this is fine. I mean, it's fine if that's your cup of tea. I can just tell you that as a, as a trader, 2.7 million worth of volume, and that's ARC, versus 46 million in volume is a discernible difference. And there isn't a trader, there isn't a tra an active trader alive that is going to prefer to make a trade on something with 2.7 million volume versus something with uh, 47 million volume, unless their intention is to literally somehow be doing some shenanigans on it and pushing the stock around. That's the only reason you would pick the thing with less volume, and that's not that's not the game here. The game's to make some real trades. Uh, so the market is still looking weak. It kind of stinks, but. Uh, it's 2% down. I haven't even reloaded. It's weird. Like, the only thing we've done is go long IBIT on this. Dude, it's still 2%? On what this the flush. Hell? Well, the NASDAQ's 1.9% yeah, to the yeah, downside. I, wow. So we got that 2% move. I know it feels really bad, but, you know, really, it's a bull market. And sometimes when they take some profits, it's going to feel, it's going to put some feels on you. But would you look at oh, something like a meta down 2.5%, if you wanted to buy the dip, you still got a ways to go to support or to the 50 period, 490, so that's another 15, 17%, uh, whatever that, or 1.3, and then no, 15 to 17% to here. Yeah, I mean, you got support at 440 something dollars on Meta. Yeah, 440? No, if I'm looking here, like this gap up, oh, it's more like 451. Okay, so 451, it's 12%. But still, like that's a pretty hefty pullback for something like a Meta. I'm not going to be picking any bottoms here. That said, the only thing that has not made any kind of a fresh low is Apple. One of these things is not like the other. And Boom. if it gets above VWAP, this should be your power hour long. Yeah, I, um, I like that. I mean, that's, like I said, number one for me today is Apple, and it is on the long. But I've just got a new position right now, so let's start it up because, uh, let's see. I want to take TQs again. So I'm shorting the market here. This is a pretty bold call. I understand that, but uh, you know, we'll try. Um, all right. So the market's at its lows for sure right now. But the thing is, is like I don't see this getting any better. And even if it does, I feel like I have a decent spot to get out here. We have the 200 period, and then we have this move, 58.85. So 58.85. Um, I feel like is going to be where we're going to try this. I have about half the position that I'd want right now. So, you know, if it goes back up to the upside, we'll try to average in at this 50 period and in around 40 or so. Um, and then if we're lucky enough to get anything up here, then fine. And I say lucky enough as in it'll be a losing trade if it comes all the way up here. But, you know, that would allow me to put on more shares. And we won't do anything too crazy until we get into like 70s here, knowing that our stop is going to be in and around 85. I told you about the problem that I had earlier with Apple, and it wasn't really a problem. It was just that because this punch right here that I, I punched into this, this was one, and what I mean by that is I just removed liquidity. It's like, give me those shares. Uh, so when that happened there, um, we, I, didn't, I never do that with like a full default unless we're breaking like you had that. I think it was... Was it 850 short or 900 short you had NVIDIA the other day? I think it was 850. It was 850. It went down to 830. So, so th those punches are like, okay, this is where, you know, if my max is 100 share, that's like a 100 share punch or something like that, right? But for me, for Apple, when I made this move, I didn't get as many shares as, as I would have if it would have danced around a little bit here more uh, and given me that opportunity. So 
That's kind of what I'm doing now with the Qs. Where did it go? So it's against me. So here we go. So now my average price is 31s as we start to, oops, here, there's the chart, as we start to float up a little bit. So there's the first couple average in spot there against this 58.85. Um, Adair's got more. Yeah, we're just take a bit of time to look at a macro minute and see what we've been doing in terms of the macro. Of course, with a day like today, that's certainly of note. Right now, DXY to the high side here at its highest level from what I can tell here since November 2023. So nice move up here for the DXY on a pretty uncertain economic outlook here. We did have Fed's Bostic saying about 12 minutes ago that he's not interest, not in a hurry to cut interest rates, that he sees right now only one cut this year, uh, though inflation will keep easing, but slower than he would necessarily like. So some more hawkish comments coming from Fed's Bostic there. We also did just have a response from uh, President Biden with regards to Iran saying that this attack could happen sooner rather than later. So definitely a lot of uncertainty with regards to the geopolitical situation. Not a lot of economic data on watch last week, next week but lots of fed speak which is certainly going to be of note we did have some market moving fed speak both this week and also last week with regards to neil kashkari so definitely keep an eye on what the feds are saying especially with regards to this geopolitical turmoil guys that's all it thank takes you. thank you adero and there was uh was it, it was chris fix can you still call this a bull market though if you look at the es down on the daily nasdaq yes perhaps well, the point I was more making is that when you have a bull market, the moves out of it, like downward moves, tend to be dramatic because you've been gliding, gliding, gliding up. And when there's a sell event, you know, to move when you go up 100, when you go up 100, it's just easier to come back five. It's just simple math. It's the same thing when a stock gets destroyed like a mullen or something. It's so easy for it to put up a 10 percent rebound or a 20 percent rebound because it, it's not having to travel through as much. Um, it doesn't take quite as much of a move. I'm going to apologize for the wick on this chart here on Marvell, but I'm moving the trail now to 750. It does feel like the NASDAQ did not break the lows there. It's managing to hold out. So yeah. if we're making some bottoms here, I'm oh, just going to go be back trailing. Up nicely here. Yeah, I'm going to start. I'm going to just move some trails in here a little bit uh, because we don't want to, I don't want to let anything get back into VWAP on me. If we come to the chart for a second, Ramin. Ram, Ram. Yeah, thank you. So if we get back through 70 and a half, I'm just going to get out of this. I already moved down the trail on Intel. I don't really care about Neo. Uh, Apple, I still believe if there's going to be a long, like it just keeps on putting in some higher lows here. So I'm going to take one of these, maybe the 175.50. If we dip into 175.50, Apple's the only thing I can find. I mean, Bitcoin was like an extreme example of why you might want to take a shot at the long even though it was weak because you had that camera wick down. In terms of looking for more structured trade long, if it's not Apple, I don't know what else I feel good about. Uh, so we'll see. This is a bull trap I just saw in the chat. Well, if you're gonna fall bull for- Bull trap? If you're gonna fall for a trap in a long this afternoon, the only, like, I feel like the stock should be Apple. So give me that one or nothing else. And if it breaks 175.50, I'm not gonna hold it to the low of the day or anything, which this isn't even the low of the day. So this isn't even low of the day. 175.5 is not the low. This is not the low at 174.80. I mean, this was in the pre-market down here at like 173.6. At the open, this was 174 bucks. So I don't think you hold it all the way down there. It'll be nasty if this stock uh, goes all the way down. I feel like I'd just rather be getting a short on the pop in like an AMD, which I know is a dog, as opposed to Apple. Yeah, I mean, dog. Yeah, Apple. Uh, I mean, I still like the long. That, that was um, June comes WDC, WWDC, Worldwide Developers Conference, WWWDC. Uh, anyways, as we go, um, we're waiting for that. So there we go, we got the reload there, not a the reload, but another average in, dollar cost average short uh, for our position here on um, the queues. So, uh, and this is the NASDAQ, so for those of you that may be unfamiliar with um, you know, how, how this works, these are the triple Qs. So we are in this right now. Uh, it's a NASDAQ trade. We're short right here. It's been obviously, uh, hello, a pretty bad day uh, for the NASDAQ today. And we're going to see if we can take advantage of that and go shorter on this name. We've already put some money in the bank on this. It was one of the trades that we had earlier on. But we do have it again now on this short. I don't have any bids uh, until the teens. But again, we do have a little bit more shares now, obviously on that reload, but we only have half of what I am gonna have if we get up into the 60s, which is where I wanna short the rest of this against this level right here, 58 and change. 
So that's where we want to get it, 5880. You guys can look this up um, on your charts as well, and you'll be able to see some of these levels. So that's what I'm looking at right now um, on this, and it's trying to get back into the money. Intel has been my number one trade uh, idea today. And finally, it is starting to break lower, but we just have a little baby piece left because we did uh, get out of Dodge uh, on that one. And unfortunately, you know, mistake or not, that is what we wound up doing there. So we'll have to wait now to see um, if Intel will continue to go lower. Realistically, though, my whole afternoon basically would be on this trade because this is a brand new position here for the TQs. Let's see if we do get a little bit of a fall down here as expected on this name. So um, yeah, that, that's what I'm, I've got cooking up here uh, into the afternoon. And if there are any questions or anything at all, uh, let me know. Sebastian, what does hit the buttons mean? Um, we are right now, I just hit a couple buttons. We went double the short, um, double your pleasure, double your fun. It's double the triple Qs uh, down to the downside and it's a triple. How does the rest levered. of that go? Uh, double, double your, your pleasure, pleasure double, double your fun. Something, something, double, double mint, mint gum. gum. Double your pleasure, double your fun. what's the thing in the middle? Double, double your the prices because of inflation. Uh, How do I not remember not that? Not the inflation. Uh, so I just got into AMD on a lower high. So I didn't wait for VWAP. Neil, wait for VWAP next time. Uh, but I didn't wait for VWAP. I saw it make this dipsy do 162 and a half, and it just wicked it twice into the quarters, okay, the three quarters, which I'm not going to hold this into VWAP. Whatever. I got into this I probably too early, but it just looked so weak, and it's AMD. So we jumped in. The price should be, if you're tra trading this, your price usually should be in the 50s and 60s in here, but I did grab it as it broke back down through 50. So my price is 45. I'll give it to this local high. But if it breaks out, you've seen this before. If it breaks out here, there's just no way that I want to hold it all the way to VWAP. Like, it doesn't, like it's not one of those trades. And it can, it's, it's a bit of it's a time of day thing because you always talk about, well, what's your risk to reward? Ah. To, at this time of day, AMD's not going to do that. Like, we're not going to get a, a $5 drop in AMD. So holding a 162 half into 163 half doesn't make any sense. In the morning, you might do that. Because, and we did this with Micron the other day, like I was willing to give it a dollar because there was like $4 downside that I saw in that trade it, on the flat bottom break, but not here. Like I'm going to try and risk about 30 to 40 cents depending on the slippage. And if we get to VWAP, let's make another trade at that price and calm things down there. Uh, top VoIP, XOM. You know, I looked at that today and I was a little bit surprised how heavy that came back in. I know oil did a bit of a pullback, but you would think with the geopolitical... Uh, stuff going on. Oh, whoops! Here, I have to do that thing. But when you have when you have the geopolitical news, like I would have expected that XOM would have got a little bit better of a, a bid and some of the oil names, but that just hasn't happened. I mean, it's kind of going in the other direction and still looking very heavy. It's just it's like let's sell before the weekend and not hold anything over the weekend, kind of deal. All right. Um, yeah, I agree. I think with all this tension here, it is risky to hold over the weekend. I mean. You know, if there's going to be something imminent, then it, it could literally happen imminently. So I would just wait um, and try to hold some of these positions and see if we can't just make the right calls um, and, you know, be cautious, but at the same time, try to remain net short and try to remain hopefully positive that everything will eventually settle themselves down. I'm just in this one. I see what Sebastian said there, double your pleasure, double your fun. Yeah, with double mint gum. I think that's all that it is. I don't... Double mint, double mint, double mint gum. Yeah, I'm. I, so I, for me, I like double mint gum. But there's double mint. There's I actually don't like gum. Uh, juicy fruit, which is a little bit. I mean, as a kid, that was probably my favorite because yeah, it's so sweet. I, that would not be my choice now. Spearmint, like double bubble. What's the one? The spearmint. No, but it's all those Wrigley's. It's all the same. Um, well, it, but here, like, so you know what? Three of them, isn't there? Juicy fruit. Tic Tac over gum Double. for me. I am a, I'm more of like a mint person. Tic Tac? Mint, who, put, who hit the fail on that? Which one of you was that? What's wrong with Tic Tac? I'm not allowed to like Tic Tacs? No, you're not, Neil. Okay. No, no, I, no. I think it's like a 50-50 kind of thing. I mean, I just, I'd rather go with Tic Tac, nice, simple. I keep them in, no, I keep them in, the, glove, keep them in the glove compartment. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just keep it real uh, with that. Excel's a good one. That's Ramin likes Excel. This is the worst one. But what's the worst one? These ones. These is non-sugar. What's the point of gum if there's no sugar? This that is um, this is uh, well, that doesn't even make sense. Uh, xylitol. That's like like gum without sugar is like certs without the resin. 
Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, you should be, we should be making some ads up in here. Um, but uh, yeah, no, 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 I agree. I'm, this is... Bye-bye uh, Intel again. I'm going to have one of these. <laughs> no? Huh? Okay, okay, I'll have, I'll have one later. I'll have one on the podcast. You're always telling us what we um, can and okay. can't do. So yeah, don't tell me what I cannot do. All right, all right, all right. Um, no all right. Fabian. Oh, uh, do you guys want this? How about this? Can you guys, can they ever hear what you guys say? I think that we should have a direct line from these jokers into the I've always show. believed that. Because, because there's a lot of funny things that get said here. And it's like, like, you guys hear half, we only hear you know when you're sitting on like transit or something and you hear half a conversation and it's like, it just makes you more engrossed into what is possibly being said on the other end. We That's what you that. guys get. Change. And it's hilarious what comes out of Fabian and Ramin um, while we're sitting here talking, but... Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens here. Um, what is the, um, there they are. That's a lot of Excel. Yeah. Well, hold on a second. Did you just make that your background or was it already your wall? What was, oh, it's a photo you put up there. I couldn't, yeah, there you go. That's what? No, that's not what you bought at the convenience store. That's her collection of gum. You chew a lot of gum to, to each their own. Uh, so two things. I just got into Apple. We'll see how that long goes. The other thing is there was a question about what the imbalance looks like. It's only 3.15. I know it feels like we've already had an entire afternoon's worth of movement, but it's, it's still relatively early. You'll have individual names that are popping up here, PBR uh, to the buy, NCLH. That could be something. I mean, NCLH, 1.4 million to the sell side could be something for an early look, but nothing that's going to stand out. The names that we care about, are not on the early look imbalances. We'll let you know if anything happens. I'll keep monitoring that. Usually at about, you know, at 3.30, we'll get a better indication on some of those types of numbers. So we'll keep you guys abreast of that. 3.30 is when it gets a little bit spicy uh, for the imbalances. The overall number, we're not gonna get till 3.50. Right. When you get this kind of action, maybe we see a little something, something. So I just got long 65s in front of that 50 level. With any luck, we're looking for a VWAP retracement here on Apple. And as I said, Apple is that one stock you know, well, it's, it's the, let's, I want to All right, let's take a little. I just want to, it's the one stock that looks relatively strong. It's making higher lows as the future makes the same low. And I always like that setup. Yeah, shout out to everybody who's with us uh, right now. Uh, hit the like and the subscribe. Let's see what happens here. Oh, there it goes. Okay, don't forget. All right, I like that. All right, perfect. Uh, hit the like and the subscribe because you know what we just did? We're putting more damage on the board. Where's the board? We got to damage it. Uh, there it is, 58.31. So a little bit of a trade here uh, coming through for uh, coming through through and through uh, for us right now on here. So we'll have to wait to see, but there's the TQs now starting to push down. We talked about this, and I hope I said it confidently enough for everybody. I wanted the short in the Qs. We talked about some levels. There's a little bit of a breakdown right now. It's only 12 cents in the money, uh, but I don't know. Hopefully it does go lower and we'll be able to take some more profit on this. Uh, again, small little trade, but for right now it's only 317 and uh, this is stacking up. So we'll do that. We'll start to stack up some more profits here as we continue uh, down the road. Unfortunately, we're kicking the can, it feels like, here uh, with our friend, and I guess most people's friends, Bitcoin, uh, as Bitcoin's been very, very kind to many traders. Um, yeah, not doing much right now. 38 on iBit. So uh, looking for some potential there uh, to trade it's in. completely and, stalled. Yeah, in and out of iBit maybe. Uh, right there could be something. But we're just focused on the NASDAQ. Get down, we're at 17. If we can get a 17, we like that one. Uh, but for right now, there it is. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's coming out one more time. So let's go, as they say, monkey hits right there, as it's a nice move to the downside uh, for this. So there it goes, nicely done into 17s. Let's see if we can get lower, 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 lower on this trade as we've done it one more time. Do you want to hear the voice of production who? Uh, right there, all right, so now we'll get going. It is in Z chat right now, so we'll see. It's gonna be yes, man, that's kind of ridiculous. Uh, I'll dismiss it on there, I'm but surprised. I already know it's gonna be yes. Who so, says who? Uh, well, right there, I, I, I selected who, because I was like, trying to be funny, but it's clearly not that funny. Yeah, I, what's interesting is, uh, you know, there's no chance, this couldn't get made. It's not, just, it's not just us that are, you know, we're here, we're trading, you can see our faces and, and hear us all the time, but None of this works without Fabian and Ramin switching everything. And if you think, like I have like, my keyboard setup is ridiculous for trading uh, in terms of how many gateways we have and there's a lot of screens and charts. Every trader has a crazy setup. But what the heck they have in front of them, 
Like, it's something out of the Starship Enterprise from, like, the old Captain. It's just, none of it makes any sense to me. And they're out there every single day hitting the keys, getting all the camera shots and all that good stuff. So uh, shout out to them uh, for that. As I said, the only thing I am long is Apple. And the only thing, oh, well, we have the iBit, but we haven't really done anything with that. No. It really had stopped moving. So I guess that would be a good thing for the longs, you would think, that it stopped moving. Uh, Apple's starting to break back into VWAP in here. If it gets to VWAP, I'm going to just take that and run. AMD is actually running under pressure. Looks like that one's going to, it's probably going to come out. I mean, the short, if the short's going to work, it's got to work here. Because, like I said, I, just, I don't need this pressing back up. Apple will probably work, and then we'll give it back on AMD. I've moved my trail again on Marvel. Marvel, sorry, it's not Marvel. It's not the like Marvel, the chip company. Hmm. Yeah, it's not Marvel Comics. I've moved uh, it down. Is Iron Man making those chips over there? Well, that'd be kind of neat. Yeah, they, they, what they need to do actually, Disney, is find a way to get Iron Man back. Like, what, what did they stop at Iron Man 2, or was there a 3? No, they did an Iron Man 3. They did a 3? You watched it. I remember you did the whole... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, did the, I ran the whole gambit, but I just... Yeah. I don't know, I wasn't... You just pretend not to enjoy the Marvel movies. No, I do enjoy the Marvel movies. You just... Well, you made a lot of fun of Ant-Man. Oh, Ant-Man. Oh, I don't think I watched that one. I think I might have watched that one. You trash talk the Is it Ant-Man or Ant-Thing? What is exactly. it? It's a man that turns into an ant? That sounds like a superhero to me. I don't know oh. the episode, but trust me when I tell you, I on know. YouTube, He's Sean pretty... talked a lot of trash about the Ant-Man movies. It's because of Paul Rudd. My wife hates Paul Rudd. I've already it doesn't even make any sense. Why? What is wrong with Paul Rudd? She doesn't like him. But why? I don't know. Oh, is she in the chat? No. Uh, does she like Timothy Chalamet? I'm not even sure I know who that is. No, that's the guy. Wait a minute, hold a second. Yeah, he was in. Oh, I know who that is. Is that the guy from Dune? Okay, the guy yeah, from okay, Dune. Yeah, okay, so, right. yeah. So. You got to say where the person's from, and then I'm, you know, for no problem. It's a main character. Yeah. It's a poly, it's a Trades on, well, the main guy. Uh, but No, no, I just, I was just thinking, like, I don't know. Like, you have Iron Man, you have Thor, you have all this stuff, and then there's B-Lady and Captain Ant America's the best. I'm not, like, you know, I'm just not... I'm not down with those characters. Yeah, so bye-bye AMD. Looks like we're going to get a bounce, maybe. So AMD, try the short off the lows. I don't want this getting into VWAP. We'll have to slap the fail on that one as we are headed back up. I should. Let's see if the trail's going to... I want to make sure my trail's in there. Marvell's probably going to trail out. I would assume that's going to happen, but I didn't do anything since VWAP on this. And we get a lot of questions about what our favorite setups are. and we, We'll have different answers for it. But I think in the, in the midday, in the afternoon, one of my favorites is, is the VWAP retracement trade. So like you get a stock which is showing you some kind of a direction. Now, I know this looks like an upward stock, but it breaks VWAP to the downside. And then if I pop this on the 15 minute and look at what's been going on this week, it's like lower highs all week. So it's putting in another lower high, breaks VWAP. Once it's under, does it show rejection of VWAP and then short it? back into uh, the volume weight average price. And to add some confluence to it, it also happened to be right at the closing price as well. So resistance at the previous close, resistance at VWAP, lower highs on the week at that price, and then you short it. The, mis the issue with that is like sometimes you want to be shorting here too at 71, which I did not do. And you know what? Let's be real. Why did I miss this trade here? You know why I missed that trade? Because that stupid push-up thing and I was like stretching and I was recovering from that nonsense. And I actually, I didn't even see, I didn't even see Marvell go here at that moment. Um, that was really tough, by the way. And I, yeah, I, you know, Ponzi Fonzi, I'm with you. Paul Rudd is cool. I'm like, so I, I worked at Canada's Wonderland and Paul hey, Rudd. Paul Rudd might be a super cool guy. Paul Rudd came to Canada's Wonderland when I was, uh, when we were in, high, would have been our senior year of high school. And I worked, it's a theme park in, in Toronto. And uh, I worked there, I worked on the stand up roller coaster. And Paul Rudd rolls in, and he's, I mean, whatever. At, like, that time, I don't know how famous he was, but, like, he was on TV and stuff. 25 years ago? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he did some things, and he was pretty cool. I'm just throwing it out there. He was a pretty cool Oh, I'm sure dude. he's a real cool he guy. He seemed pretty down to earth. He might be a, re he might be a real guy. He's pretty guy. funny, too. Well, he's, he's funny in the 40-year-old yeah, virgin. Yeah, yeah, So he, I don't know he, why I have to defend other Paul than, Rudd. No, you don't. Other than Ant-Man, he's Paul Rudd in every movie. Someone said that that's right. Yeah, but what's he's wrong? A yeah. Nothing. He's a character. Look, I like Seth Rogen. I, I'm not saying I don't like Paul Rudd. Okay. I just think the I just think Ant Man. I just think you could come up with a little more creative creativity there. That's all. Uh, but shout out to Marvel and everybody that's in there as well. Um, all right. Um, so we are changing our plan of action, and that is with the TQQ. So 
We'll take bless you. We'll take one more short in, the, in and around here. We already, we got out of only 30%. We got out at the bottom of the day. So pretty good there. We're not going to, now I could see us bouncing. You know, so what, I, what I'm getting at is we've tightened this up. I'm using the 200 period. So if we break, break above this, I'm not giving it up here. Like, look, like this is a trade. Bang, all the way down. Like, these are the ones that we're talking about. Shorting on VWAP. Like Neil said, you know, you get distracted. We, I was out for a walk, um, which I do every day anyway, so that, I wasn't really distracted. I just wasn't here. Uh, but that could have been a short right there, obviously. Uh, again, back into VWAP, so we missed that. And then I just wanted to say, hey, if we're going to, the 50 period hasn't been that great. I would have much rather it been up here when we shorted it. But, I mean, again, triple tops, duh. That's where we'd want to be. But at the end of the day, a breakthrough of 60 is what it is. Join me and Brendo tomorrow because we have the podcast. We're going to be filming that tonight. So immediately after this, I got podcast. Then I got team, uh, team dinner slash fun games party uh, with the kids. And that should be a lot of fun. So that's, an, that's another hockey thing. So we'll be busy tonight. Uh, but remember... Watch out for your trades, especially in the after hours. There's going to be no recap show. Liquidity pretty much dries up in the after hours. So if you do get any news about, like, unfortunately, something in Iran or something like that, um, just watch out. May want to, as Neil and I both mentioned, up to you. But, you know, flattening out, um, you know, before close is what Neil and I will do every day this weekend. Again, not financial advice, but well, might not be a horrible idea to try to stay a little flat uh, if you can, I mean, look, I have, I am net long. I'm long only. Like all of my, I've got my TFSA, I've got my 401k, which is RRSP, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, um, you got to be cautious, especially if you are swinging something uh, there. So just be careful uh, into the weekend. So that's all. But the longest weekend of, of my of my professional career was when one of the traders on our floor, and it was accidentally, was, he didn't mean to get stuck on in an overnight position, but it was on a Friday. And like, if, you have to, if, you, if you get caught as a day trade overnight, you're not supposed mm -hmm. to. And the whole idea is that you have more leverage because the trades you're putting on are supposed to be short-term trades. So when you hold one over a weekend, the risk is obviously bigger for a gap. And it was, I didn't get any sleep. I remember when the futures opened up on Sunday, Sunday evening, uh, I was like, I... All I could do was like, keep looking at the prints, keep looking for news. I was freaking out. I was like, anything happening on the stock? Uh, before we go to Adara, I'm, we're starting to break back out here on Bitcoin. Uh, so this is 38.12 on iBit. If we can maintain this, I'm moving the trail back underneath here. So instead of 37.6, let's just let it ride us. We're looking for VWAP 37.85-ish. Like right in there is going to be where the stop is. But let's just let it ride. Um, it was a liquidity flash event, usually looking for the reverse when that happens on Bitcoin. Let's go back to the desk with Adara. Keep an eye on um, Tesla and some of these EV names here. Honda coming out and saying that they're in the progress of uh, establishing an EV hub in Ohio to lead to more EV production in North America, uh, expecting to hire some associates and committing at least $700 million to transforming some of its auto plants. So keep that in mind. Honda EV story, guys. All right. Um, hmm. Prozo. Yeah. Be Why not? I'll look at some things that, like, if there's some small caps that are running. Uh, PRZO here. W what is that? What is going on with this bid? What is up with uh, Prozo? No. Like, see this? Like, what's up with that? Like, somebody, there's a bit of an algo or program sort of stacking the bid up above a dollar. It's 8 million shares. It's a $0.01 cent spread. Okay, now it's a $0.02 cent spread. But oh, no. for the most part, it's a $0.01 cent spread. Actually, let me go back Come here. On, but see this. Oh. Outside of this level, like how much liquidity is there really? A couple thousand shares per level on a dollar stock. And most of this is just some stacking of the bid here. So you have to be a little bit careful. I like these dollar breakouts, though. Like it's holding, you know, you're holding a consolidation above a buck. Generally speaking, the risk to reward is good. You just got to make sure you price it for like you're not like you're not getting the normal amount of liquidity like when nikola is at a price level like this there's tens of thousands of shares at every single price level displayed 
This one, you've got a few thousand at every single level. So it's a little bit different, this Prozo. I don't really know the news. I'm just sort of talking about the setup here. So if it breaks that funky bid, I'll see if $1 holds, if a dollar holds, and it bounces, I try to get like ones or twos on the way back in with a stop, or they just broke that bid. So now I want to see if someone comes in at a buck. Uh, but until I see that happen, I'll stay away from it. Uh, Apple is eh, not quite at VWAP. It's starting to roll back over. We wanted this to get into VWAP. Nice bounce, no follow through yet on AAPL. Yeah, we're still here on the queues, and I was just looking into, I'm at, um, I'm at 30s, so I'm at 30, uh, 8.30, so for this. And I, I, we had looked at it before. It must have been where the 50 period was, but we just hit as high as about 18s or 19s there. So, um, oh, you know what? No, it's probably here. This is 40, so yeah. So that's where we are, so we're just ahead of this. We'll see if we get that filled, who knows. The trade that we're really just working with now is this TQ trade. We were at 48, believe it or not, it went to 48, we didn't get filled. I don't know what to tell you, but we were there, uh, or, and it would have been a nice trade. Like, we, I really needed that fill, that would have been great uh, to get that, but we didn't, so, all right, uh, we missed it by literally one penny. If it comes back up there, we'll take that fill again and see if it, see if it prints for us. I bit we just talked about it, and it's Intel is the only one left on the board for me here. So um, that's that. Again, it will be a pretty positive day, man. I mean, we're, we're, we're putting up the numbers again here today. It'll probably be like my second or third best day this week. Um, and yeah, other than that, good one. We do have a trade that was Alibaba. I could consider going long if there was a name here today that I've liked long has been Alibaba, but today we tried it and lost. So this is the, the red name, the scratch for me uh, there right now. But... 171.50, I mean, it's, it's been so hard to believe that China's on the rebound here. I mean, they had a bad day yesterday. Now you get this sort of talk of uncertainty. We had that story about China potentially supporting of Russia there. Um, so that's, that's not going to be good for sure as we go. But um, yeah, so that's China. That's Alibaba. Rest of the day, we'll leave. I'm going to leave the longs alone. I, I'm going to stick with the rhetoric that I've been saying, and that is, is that I believe in the short. So I think that heading into the afternoon, in, heading into the weekend, I think the short would be right. If I'm gonna lose, it's gonna be on this one trade right here, right now. There's a half hour left. I will average into this. If we break above this 60, then we're gone. Um, we're getting above there now, the 50 period, obviously. I don't have to look at the NASDAQ anymore because I'm looking at the NASDAQ here and trading it. So again, we're bouncing around the 50 period moving average. Generally speaking, we want to look at equity versus the market, but I'm trading the market because as far as equity is concerned, um, I like that Microsoft dip buy. Like, I like more dip buys here. That's already happened at 420. I mean, we were like, hey, when's the next shoe to drop? Maybe if we're lucky enough to get Microsoft at 420. Well, that does happen today um, down there. There's iBit. Let's Still go. Still going. Spin it up for iBit right there. We'll tweet that one out. I mean, when all, it's kind of like the Warren Buffett. Thing with, with Bitcoin. That's what I'm trying to do. When there's blood in the streets, man, that's where I'm in there. I'll say, yeah, sure, I'll take some Bitcoin. Um, so that's what we did. So we did take some, oops, uh, we did take some Bitcoin right there. So let's just see what winds up happening now as that's a pretty good spot for us for that out. Um, and what's happening right here is this. The TQs are starting to go. So, oh, I just got trailed out of Intel. Okay, so you're out of Intel. So this is starting to go up. We do have a position. We're, low, we're short at 58.40s right now. So let's see what happens here. Um, should be a nice play. But again, if it breaks that 60, we're gone. This could be a quick, quick in and out here on the TQQs for the day. But right now, we're short at 42. I just got out of Intel when it broke 75. Uh, I bit, I'm, moving, I'm still moving the trail up, so from 37.8 to 38 now, and I think we got this shot to get back into VWAP. It's an out in front of VWAP. I mean, even if it wasn't an out in front of VWAP, it's 3.33, so, I mean, we have 25 minutes left, guys uh, and girls. Like, you, at some point, when you got the clock against you as a day trader, you do have to cover uh, market, cover your positions. So, NEO... Oh, I should probably just get on the bid. Like, why even bid down here? See when this is happening. I'm just going to bid the low of the day. And if it breaks, like, a penny, if it breaks this consolidation by, like, one cent, I'll just get out. So if it breaks this, just get out and just bid the low of the day for something that's not moving. Marvell still looks like it's okay off the lows. Trailing to here, but if I can just get 70, why wouldn't I take it? 
So I'm going to get a bid out on Marvell. Coins relatively weak on this move, says Oscar. That, but that actually doesn't surprise me. Like, if it's a Bitcoin move, like, why does Coinbase need to move as strongly on a rebound as uh, Bitcoin? It's, it's not really the same principle. So, yeah, Coinbase hanging off those lows. But that works in both directions. We've seen Coinbase rally on its own merits without uh, Bitcoin doing anything. But, yeah, Coinbase down 6%, not rallying with IBT. That's why when that move happens, the ETFs are great because we just go right to them. Before yeah. we had them, like, what were we doing? We are probably punching in tomorrow. Oh, we were testing, yeah, we were testing yeah. Bitcoin futures. Remember? And Bitcoin futures we have, but we can only go long. And IBIT, of course, we can go both directions because it's an ETF. Let's go to Adara. Getting some comments coming right now from Fed's Daily, last Fed speaker of the day and week, saying that given the, this week's CPI report, it's a good time to remind people that the Fed is not data point dependent. They uh, will lower rates when they feel comfortable doing so. So when we get more details, you're coming from Fed's Daily doing this Q&A right now. I will let you guys know. The Fed is not data dependent? What? Uh, okay, I'll have to, I'll have to rehear that because uh, I thought the Fed was data dependent. So, um, all right, so we'll, we'll, we'll wait for that one. Um, all right, so right now, here come the TQQs back in. We are getting later on in the day, so it's back to flat right there. We just touched 43s. We're short at 43. Um, let's see if we can get a little bit lower. That 200 period, or that 50 period moving average is like 36s uh, right there. Do I have a bid down there? Yes, I do. Okay. So we'll wait for that to come out and fill if we're lucky enough to get that again uh, down there, 36 or so um, for this. And that this, of course, is the market. So we'll see. Uh, maybe we get a fade. Maybe we don't. Uh, hopefully we do. And um, we'll be able to get some more out. So nice push for right now. We are short the NASDAQ. We said we wanted to stick with that sort of thought. Uh, right there. I'm going to put another bid down here, 35.60, because honestly, if the market goes, then Intel should be fine as well. So we'll, um, we'll get down there. Again, let's take it out, um, just because I'm already short the market. So worst case scenario, um, we get taken out of both of them, which would, be, which would be the worst case scenario. So here we go. Nice little move down right now. Let's see if it can be supported. NVIDIA 8. Wow. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, well, that's my bad. We talked about going long at 875 against 873. Remember, we even zoomed this out, and I was like, if we get, and I just didn't put the bid in. If we get down to 875, we even zoomed into yesterday, and we were like, okay, if we get down to 875, we have that wick down there that's 873. It's worth $2. So there's 875. Again, maybe you take 875.50. So you'd have to give this trade about $3. But there's the move back up to 882. Wow, props up. Let me know in the chat if you took that. I mean, I mentioned it. I don't have it. Doesn't mean you guys don't. I hope you do. Nice trade uh, if anybody had that one because, man, we nailed that but didn't take it. So I hate, I, I like when that happens, but I, I hate when I don't take them. Um, all right, so right now the TQs trying to go back down to the downside. Um, hopefully it will when we get back from Adara at the desk. This part of the show brought to you by Trade Ideas. Real-time scanning and alerting used in our desk by many of our traders every day. See what's moving in the moment with Trade Ideas. Check out the link in the description for 20% off. Hey, oh, it's all good. Uh, I'm out of Bitcoin, or I, I bet I should say. I know we should always say it correctly. So it just, just trailed out. I just took it stair step to the upside, but once it broke, this 38.20, I said, let's get VWAP or let's trail it back into the previous support level. And like, I understand when a stock is going, or when something is going down, it looks like, say stock out of a, just a force, force of habit here. But when something is moving down that way and you just had the bid falling, 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 and it turns into like a liquidity event to the downside, instead of trying to pick, just sit on the bid and look for a long, the better approach or the safer approach is to allow the buyers to come in, allow it to show some strength, have the bid return to normal, liquidity comes back to look somewhat normal, and then once you see that, go long at that range. So that was right at about the 37.6 level into 37.40. And that's kind of what you heard us say there. And you get a bit of a rally. And I'm not saying Bitcoin's going to be fine from here and nothing will happen over the weekend. But generally speaking, if you're looking for the reversal play, it's a lot easier to try to catch that turn after the market makers, which is all algos now, 
come back in and start supporting the bid. And when that happens, you should be okay. Speaking of retracements or pullbacks, that was VWAP, no punch through on Apple. Mm. All right, 176 even breaks, I'll just get out of Apple. If you're gonna tell me that it's gonna be that small of a move, we'll just take what we're able to get here because this has been a pretty heavy afternoon, or day, I should say. So if we can even get something busting through VWAP, I'll give it a chance. It's 3.39, so you are running out of time on the day. As I said, there's not much for the imbalances. You guys NCLH is the one that's still sticked I've out for 1.4 million. I would suspect there's an outside, ch outside chance Apple at 350 could be something. If it does, and I'm still in it, Oh, yeah. you know, I don't want to have offers out in case, but I'm going to put a trailing stop in there just so we can take the profits. Like the only thing other than Bitcoin that we add to the long side, thankfully it's going to work out even in a market which is back down to the lows. The Nasdaq still 1.9% down. Uh, thank you, Kevin Mendoza. I mean, we don't talk about P&L, but uh, it's been a good one right there as Hydration Nation uh, is winning again here today. I mean, look at IBIT. Did we not call that? Look at the TQQs right now. Who's in TQQs with me? Let's go. Um, there it is right there, man. Nice move back in on the market again. Like, I don't know. This isn't, this isn't a crystal ball or anything. It's ex just experience. And that's why we're trying to show you different trades that, that are there for everybody. Um, so we just, we just sat back down. Um, we refilled our water, did what we did. Said what's up over there, said what's up to Patrick over here. Um, and then right now we come back and just find out that yes, we are reloaded. Um, we got the reload that we wanted, baby, right there. I told you we were waiting at 48, so that's 48 right there. So when that comes in, you know, that's the price we, oh, we got 49s, my bad, we got 49s uh, right there. Because we averaged in at 45, I moved the 48 down there. We just pushed in again. If we break 60, we're gone, but so far so good. If you had that trade, I don't know, it's 340. You may want to get out, but we'll see into the close. Good little out there for us at the bottom. Let's see if we can get even lower and uh, make this something really special uh, right there. So yeah, it's like um, the first rule of P&L is right. It's like Fight Club, right? Um, so we'll, we'll slow down on worrying about this because we could get stopped out in five seconds uh, again on this, on this trade. So I'm just happy that we went over here and did this. I mean, to me, this was bigger. Boom, bottom of the day in IBIT. I mean, missed it by 20 cents. And then we, we basically get pretty much the whole retracement back on half of it. So we take 30 or 40 cents on the first half, then we take pretty much the full move. I mean, I can't predict that's the full move. We were out of it with a couple, couple pennies short of the full move. The full move was 40s. We got out at 31 or whatever, 30s. So pretty good back in. I really like this trade on Bitcoin. So 66, 67, and I think we will do uh, that Warren Buffett mentality, and that's what we did there, and it worked. So the next time we see Crypto absolutely crashing like that, which was kind of lucky because we were on Mara, right? Um, Someone asked a question about Mara randomly two minutes before that happened, and I was just kind of answering the question. I wouldn't have noticed it otherwise. That's so. Yeah. I think Kyle W. This is so why I do. This is why I do this. I also, by the way, get very tired of my own voice. Trust me. Uh, you have no idea. Like that's why I have this ibuprofen here. It's like shut up, dude. But but this is what's going on. We keep narrating the market thought and we all get smarter and a lot faster. I mean, this is, the whole, this, is, this is the whole point. As I talk through my own decision making, it's helping me get much better, which in turn, I know, hopefully, is, is helping everybody. So that's, that's the purpose of the show. You just absolutely 100% nailed it. And also to show you, and it's why we do the leaderboard and stuff like that, to show you that, hey, you know, you can have an office of traders behind you. Still a very profitable thing to sit here and trade. You just gotta be smart about it. Trade what's been working for you. And then once you're confident, and we say congratulations, here we go, this is gonna come out in a second here uh, on the TQs. Little bit of a break. Yeah, we up. just spoke, spike? Yeah, we just spiked up. So this is gonna come out here on the TQs. And again, we'll give some back here because we didn't get it all out. We talked about that. But at the end of the day, we are still going to be, the TQs is still going to be a heck of a, here it goes, it's going to go. It's, 
Still, still a very, very green thing here. But yeah, we'll fail on this one. It looks like we will get stopped out here into the close. It's 343. You know, my, my logic for holding the short I thought was pretty sound, and I still think it might be. I mean, this is probably a better out right there. I could hold it all the way to that. But again, with these imbalances coming out, like a little bit of a spike. Okay, you know what? Maybe I'll just change this five cents. Let me put this at 58.70. So a breakthrough of 58.70s, uh, then we'll get out. Okay, it's a nice move up there. I don't, didn't want to get wicked out by one or two pennies there. So we'll try it a little bit more because we got some out. The trade will basically be flat, maybe a little bit red at the end of the day. So yeah, that kind of sucks. But right now we're out of the money, 15 cents on the TQs. Yeah, the trail, a trail out of uh, Marvell there. Apple looks like it'll get to VWAP with five minutes to go to the imbalances. So here's the trail out we said. If it kind of broke this consolidation, I gave it a couple of cents past that 40 level. And once it got past, we just jump out of it. Apple, but the only thing that looked, other than we talked about IBIT already, and that was a very different situation. But Apple's the only thing that while the market crested at lows, higher lows on a stock that, that obviously is going to generally, loosely speaking, follow the market, showed you its relative strength most of the afternoon. Whether it gets through VWAP or not, we'll see. But if it does, I'm going to hold it to 350. If it, somehow Apple comes out of the buy and balance, great. If it doesn't, then I'll probably get trailed out. But once it's consolidating above VWAP, I'll probably move my stop up to the 20s, and we'll see where it goes. Chris, Intel 30 next week. I don't know about next week. I think it's got to earnings. When do they report? Let me just double check that. I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, we'll go to Darren in a quick second. April 25th. Ooh, the NFL draft. That'll be fun. Uh, so the NFL draft starts, and, and then Intel reports on the 25th, so mark that one off. I think they've got till then. I don't know if it gets to 30 until that point. That's just my three cents. Yeah. No, it could. It absolutely could. Yeah, yeah, good call. But good call. Uh, Great question. You no, know, it could. It absolutely could. It's a 35 right now, so that's really not even that far. <laughs> Let's go to Adara. Keep an eye on SPR and BA here. I have Spirit Airlines up saying in a statement to Reuters that it's limiting its overtime and hiring for certain roles as the Boeing 737 MAX output drops and that it's aligning production to support the current customer rate profile. So basically making some statements suggesting a drop in production and interest amidst the ongoing Boeing 737 situation, guys. Yeah, about that, um, that TQs, I mean, this is, again, we got out there. It broke that high. It's coming right into this level of 80. This is why we get out. Again, you know, make the money short, make the money short, and then once it breaks, you're 15 or 20 cents. We should have just got out when we said at 65, but instead we got 71s there. We actually wind up getting, I think we got 70s almost. I think it's kind of, oh, 71. Okay, so um, not great. We did get that trade, but it's okay. Um, we are out of that one, and we'll slap the fail on it for sure. But this is the thing, this is why we talk about this. So again, today, um, little volatile here into the close. Nice move up for NASDAQ, just right here now. This could be the spot where we turn around, but remember, in just a couple, I'm not taking anything else, because we gotta be flat. That's not, it sounds like an excuse, but we do have the imbalances coming out right now. It is a Friday. So in just three minutes, in lovely Toronto, Ontario, Canada right now, by the way, let me know who's winning the Masters there in the chat, by the way. I think it's still DeChambeau. Is it DeChambeau? Well, let me know if someone's watching it. Um, so I just wanted to say that these imbalances are going to affect the market, but the TQs just pushed right into that 80 level. Remember, if there was more time in the day, most likely, we would have used this 80 as our short, as our area to get out. It still ran all the way up there. It's not like, you know, but anyways, I feel like that's a better, that's a better level. So it looks like Apple, Apple's taking VWAP. There's about Boom. two minutes until the imbalances drop. So I'm going to tighten stop my stop up in here. I want to make sure we lock in the profit. If it can hold 50s going into it, great. If it doesn't, then we'll just jump right out. So like Apple, again, it's just whatever, whatever is relatively strong, if you can find it. I said I was going to look at that Prozo, but nothing ever set up for that uh, PRZO stock. Right, right. You know, it was a small cap. It was a dollar, but the spread and the liquidity was was actually trash on it, and that's that's dangerous. I don't think you should trade. It's, it's my opinion. If you're trading like penny stocks, generally speaking, you want there to be good liquidity on it because the the positive thing about trading them is like it's like infinite scalability kind of deal. And when you have one of those, a, a dollar stock or an eighty cent stock or whatever should not have spreads that are two or three cents ever. And if it does, then your risk reward is going to be trash. You'll never really be able to scale those. And I started out. 
20 some odd years ago, my first profitable month was trading penny stocks. And liquidity was everything when you trade them. And that's what allowed you to be uh, good. So nothing against Prozo. If you made money trading it, you know, good on you. I have nothing against those things. So I'm out of Apple. We'll ring the register on that. I just wanted to see what happened. With one minute to go until the imbalances drop, it's been a wild day, obviously. Markets are trying to rally to not end 2% to the downside. It was a great bottom-top move yesterday. Today, it was, yeah, there was, it was just down, really. Like, there was a little bit at the open on, like, three names, and everything else was just pretty much red uh, the whole way. So we'll get those imbalances. Still not out of NEO. Like, that can't even hit the... Yeah, this stock won't even move one cent. Now we're just going to bid the actual current bid. Oh, man. Um, all right. Well, again, just uh, th you know, thanks for watching. We only have 30 seconds left. Hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. Make sure you check the podcast tomorrow. Brendan and I will talk about some fun stuff. We'll talk about the markets, and we should have a good one as well. So that is tomorrow at 10 o'clock as we spam the bottom of that. We're actually working on the podcast room. That should be pretty hot as well. So the TQs does fade off at that level, so let's wait to see. In only just 10 seconds... Dreams become nightmares. All right, no, just joking. Nothing's going to happen, probably. Uh, all right, so here we go. We will watch to see what does happen here as these imbalances will come out for your Friday. Um, and there we go. So a little bit of a move up in the TQs. We've got Intel for a buy. You guys want to talk about a good out for Intel. Whoopsies. Uh, what was that out? Right there. There's Intel's. That's my last out right there. 3570. Wow. Um, all right. All right. What else? Uh, BAC, so some bank names in here. I don't see major NASDAQ. Oops, I just saw Cisco. I just saw Apple right there. Apple with a buy, 800,000 to buy. So Ooh. nice move to the upside right there for Apple. Amazon to buy. So is this going to be one of those days where the NASDAQ was down close to 2%, but then ends the day with a monster rally, and we only finished down like 1.2, and then we're like, ah, well, you know, what was it on the week now? We'll have to look at that. Are we red on the week? I guess we must be, right? Um, nice move right here for Amazon back up to the upside, back up we to 186. You have to be still uh, right there. So again, I think these all look like, oh man, like I just wish there was a little bit more time left in the day. I think these are all shorts I mean, I'm right now. Yeah, of course. We're I mean, look at the TQs, guys. Look at the TQs. Wow, we nailed that level. That's risky though into the close. Hey, look, the good thing is we're back Monday. So definitely join us on Monday. Uh, we'll, we'll be back to hopefully do a little bit more of this uh, for you. And yes, um, we did have a very good week. So um, very good week this week. We'll see if we can rinse and repeat that. It's the numbers 1.5 billion with a, a B big buy to amount. buy, and that's only New York. Yeah, that was a big buy and bounce because it, it doesn't include that app, that number on Apple. Uh, it doesn't include that number on Intel. So. You know, obviously a decent size buy and balance, which makes a little bit of a sense going a little bit of sense going into the end of a week where it was a bit heavy, it was a big pullback, so probably some short covering. And it's a Friday, always have a little more action there. Uh, someone just said, look at Costco, a big smiley face on Costco. Costco back to the 50 period moving average. You know, buy quality stocks on dips. I mean, I know a lot of things look bad, but uh, how about looking at something that looks really good this week? Costco dips into 700, it's right back to 730 in the 50 period moving average. This is what I think a lot of us are hoping you get some opportunities to oh, buy, yuck. like your Amazons of the world and all that kind of stuff. What's the yuck? No, because I, I was thinking, I didn't step into this because I wanted to look at Nike and Lulu. I was like, because Costco bounced back, is some of these bouncing no, Lulu's back. Lulu's a different story, though. This is like. Lulu's a different story. No, I'm just saying, it's getting, still getting crushed with Nike. I just wanted to see because of China uh, today. Actually, Nike's okay, it seems like. Yeah, Nike's flat. Okay, so um, just Lulu right now. Lulu has some of the, uh, yeah. Yeah, so all the way to the downside. Pretty nasty here. Um, if there's going to be some, wow. All right, that looks even worse than look I the, thought. Look at the weekly. Uh, right now for Lululemon. Um, yeah, I should get up the trade ideas chart for the weekly. But there it is, 360. Nice dip down. Uh, 320 maybe. What is that very bottom? I have this epic pen here. Um, that is 290. All right, that might be in play as well. Intel next week and in around 30, I think, is possible. Oh, man, those, that, that, ah, that's too bad. The TQs really fell off of that level. Brr. All right, well, we got to get stopped out at some point. Um, nice move up for a a a AMZ and Amazon and upside for Apple into the close. So in what has been a pretty nasty day, look at this, man, Apple up 0.79. So, again, really, really good there uh, for Apple 
if you are long, which I am, and I think most of us are, Apple holding out Everybody's nice, long Apple. Yeah, if you have any ETF basically in the... They're like even in like medical ETFs and all that because of the smartwatch. Everything like, you... Yeah, everything that you ever buy, uh, Apple makes money on. Yeah, if you have an investment account, whether, whether, whether you have an advisor or whether you're in mutual funds or... Uh, I'm pretty sure almost every single one of us owns, owns Apple. In, uh, well, for us, it's our like TFSA or RSP, and then you know it's different for you guys, your IRAs and all that good stuff. But uh, Apple bouncing off BWAP and still trying to go. Uh, it's up almost almost a full percentage point. Uh, the imbalances will probably start to pair off in one minute. It's 354 at 355 is generally when you see a lot of those numbers that were bigger. If they haven't already paired off, they'll pair off even more. Intel's down to a million. Already, Amazon's down 700,000. I don't even see Apple anymore. So Apple has clearly already paired off. And that's why you'll have it come back in to said VWAP. So what else? Yeah, April is flying by. So someone in the chat. It's crazy. Say that Every month well. is flying by. Oh, my well, God. See, the problem with that is it's like as you get older, and the reason why it seems like time is flying when you get older is when you are only 10 years old or 5 years old or 7 like my daughter is, like every single month is a larger percentage of your life. And when you get older, like that, that little chunk of time, it is a much smaller fraction of your life. And the way our brains work and memory works, it just seems like it's moving faster because your entire perception is your time frame. So if you're, if you're like a two-year-old, like, like one day is so much and it, it flies by so slowly. And that's the beauty of looking at things through the, the lens of a child. It's just like, I find everything that my daughter experiences, like we were playing, uh, we were playing just some board games yesterday. And it's just like, we'll play board games for 15 minutes. And it's like 15 minutes is nothing here. But like that 15 minutes, it's like so much is going on for her and she learned some stuff. Uh, she, she decided that she wanted to uh, make up some rules in our code breaker so that it would be difficult for daddy. Yep. The sense. code breaker is supposed to have like, it's like five different colors that you put in for your code, and it's one of each. She's like, daddy, you're, we're gonna play this time, and I'm, but, allowed, yeah. I'm allowed to have the colors as many times as I want. And I said, sweetheart, the, it's not really built that way. You're gonna make it impossible for me to actually win. She's like, no, it'll be fun this way. And if you can do it, then I'll give you a hug. And obviously it was impossible. Yeah, rules are uh, meant to be broken. That's course, how she rolls. when you are HR. But it, looks like it, it all happened in like 15 minutes. It was crazy. Uh, so four minutes to go. What do you guys want to talk about here? Oh, wow. TH went into 80% cash. What did? Someone in the chat just said they went into 80% cash today. Probably smart. Yep. It depends on how active you are. I find like I just never want to be that aggressive. I just want to... I think Neil should have a podcast. You know, like, I, I think we should do a blah, podcast. Blah, blah, blah. Only with Neil or Neil and Sharif or something called Story Time with Neil. Every time you talk about that, people are like, oh, good, it's Story Time with Neil. Oh, God. So let's do that. Let's get that scheduled up. We'll, ha we'll, we'll throw Neil on a podcast. My wife is going to hate it. No, it's, no, uh, yeah, well, whatever. It's yeah, content. I get long winded. Story Time with Neil. I tend to. I'm being serious. I, I think that would be no, good. No, to be honest, like, I actually, and I fall into this with the traders too. Like, I'll, if I get a thought in my head, like, it's usually like a complete story. Because I find, like, memories are everything. I'm a very, like, I like to be present in the moment. So, like, I, and I, like, I feel like your memories aren't, like, pictures and all that stuff. It's, like, you experiencing things and your perception of them, which is cool. Bedtime stories. Oh, I, I like trading stories. Like, we have, like, there's some crap that's happened on our floor. Yeah. No, and, I'm not, and I'm not talking about this trading floor. I'm talking way back when, when Sean and I were, uh, we had our own trading floor. It was by the museum here in Toronto. Uh, some traders that are still in the game that, that, that started under us. And there's some ridiculous shenanigans that happened oh, on that yeah, floor. Always uh, some good, some bad, uh, some funny. Most good. Most yeah, mostly, mostly good, but it was, it was fun times. And you know, that's the kind of thing we could always talk about if you guys are even remotely uh, interested in it. But it is what it is. Now, the market's still... Fun times. Yeah, it's still range bound. We're getting a decent bounce. I just want to see what happens at this close on some of the volatile names. Like what you want to see on a down day, what I want to see on a down day, is I'd like to see buyers into the close on a Friday if we've had a week day, because that's always a good sign. Like are there people buying this close or is it just, like, you know, it could be some shorts covering, it could be some people confident enough to hold over the weekend. It's just generally good. You don't want to be closing too weak 
uh, on the market. There's only a minute left, huh? Yeah, it's, well, we got 90 seconds to go yeah. here. It's not a minute left. We've got right. 90 seconds to go. we got some time. Remember, of course, as already mentioned, there is not going to be a market recap show because oh, the right, podcast right, is right. being taped. So at 4 o'clock, it'll cut to black. Obviously, that doesn't it mean it's over. So like you can always go back and you know, maybe watch the midday, watch, learn to trade. I think that's always valuable. You might have missed something. Yep, yep. Uh, the lessons there were fantastic, uh, as always. Watch your, what was your lesson today was about? Well, the lesson today was just stay in your lane. Right, stay in your lane. Oh, yeah, that's the best. Just, that's because the best. look at J.P. Morgan. Like, did we trade J.P. Morgan today? Did we try to force along because we thought the report was good? No. And uh, the, uh, talk about story time. We had a trader on our floor who, if a stock he liked, had a good earnings report, he would just go long and he would average in long because he believed it should go up. And I'm not making it up. And he was a really good and smart trader. He just had a few fatal flaws in him, and that was one of them. He just, if he believed something was fundamentally true about a stock, he could not trade against that. And it was like it was, like it was a Achilles heel. That's the word I'm looking for. I mean, a story about Sharif, he was sitting there trading closes, um, er, uh, like earnings after hours, and I told him, and I said, dude, that's pretty much the worst thing you could ever do. Um, and he stopped doing that almost immediately. I don't know if, it's, if that's true or not. There are, other worse, immediately. there are other worse strategies out there, that's for sure. But um, that was just the liquidity and having the experience of, like, you never know, as Neil said, when earnings... Okay, let's go. Uh, oh, we, shoot. We're already past I missed the counts on my bed. Uh, yeah, I was I was waiting. listening to you there. Yeah, it's okay. Sorry. Three, two, Three, and two, one. one. now. Yeah, no, it was just about um, it was just about trading those that was my uh, crazy moves uh, there in the after hours. So yeah, but again, a lot of people make money trading um, the the closes, the earnings reports, things like that. So all right, it's been an absolutely fantastic week. I just hope that um, you know this world can remain uh, somewhat. It's not really that peaceful, but let's hope for a better weekend from some of those stories that we got here today. Um, again, another very, very good week. A shout out to you know all the successful guys and everybody that's been trading here with us this week. Everybody behind us, of course. Shout out to Miss Adara. She passed the test. She be going live uh, very, very soon. Um, and then Sharif will be like, "What the hell?" Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's going live. Yeah, that's what passing the test. That's okay, Ramin. Every night at the podcast, like, she gets a little bit, you know, because the thing is, is, like, she's got to stay later now to do this. Just give, um, All give of that candy. stuff. And we just got to teach Neil to run the board. Then you I, guys there's, no, go. there's no freaking you know. way. Uh, Look but, at that thing. Are you kidding me? There is no chance. What, are you, what, what is the eclipse happening over there? You got those sunglasses on and everything like that? Oh, is she too cool for school, eh? Okay. Don't even act like you were actually worried. Oh, by the way, I mean, I got, a, you know, I got some phone calls to make after this. I got to handle some stuff. Oh, she's got a headache. Oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry. That's fine. Yeah, this is the worst place to come if you have a headache because you sit down here and these lights just... That's right. why I wear these um, when we're not on air. Yes. Oh, by the way, is that eclipse ever happening anytime soon? Because uh, actually... Oh, wow. Don't... Oh. Don't actually look Do at Do not look at those lights. Wow. I try not to. I really try... Like, you, I've, I've got uh, it's like I've that caught myself looking snowing. up, it's and then it's, it's really bad. They're really bright, but they make us look uh, better. I have no idea. Does it actually work? I don't know. All right. Uh, yeah, we are basically being forced to wrap this up. Okay. So, okay, good week. Uh, we, uh, this, we will be back. This really shouldn't be a bowl. Uh, yeah. Oops. So we, got, we, got, we got the trophy here. We got Whoops. the sticky note, and we got uh, the bear. But, yeah, we don't yeah, want to. This is from my son. So yeah, about Happy that. Father's Day. Happy Father's Day 2020. Wow. And no, nothing big happened that year. Ooh, wow. That's uh, it wasn't well, that was a long, long, ass, long, big, long time ago. Okay. Thank you, Bears vs. Bulls. We got some questions for the podcast. We'll be answering those um, as uh, we're all ready to rock and roll. So thank you for a good week. Thanks to everybody. Thanks to Bears vs. Bulls. Thanks, Neil, Sharif, Adara, Fabian, Ramin, Mark, um, and everybody. As what's going on with the lights? Pay those damn bills. See you, everybody. <laughs>